for anyone wanting to learn how to identify Freemasons, and understand the sect's true nature and goals. This testimony is invaluable. More importantly, it confirms Freemasonry is a sect, behind which lies Satan, and his evil work. And those who join it, align themselves with Satan, and evil, whether conscious of it or not. From the Catholic standpoint, for anyone wanting to remain faithful to Christ, there is no reason whatsoever to have any connection or association or interest in or with Freemasonry. Since its teachings are heretical, the antithesis of Catholicism and non-biblical. During the course of this presentation, the evidence which convicts the current Pope and other post-Vatican II Popes as members of Freemasonry will be clearly seen. Therefore these being men who adhere to Masonic teachings and clearly placed in the position of the Pontiff by their cohorts in the Conclave who also as Freemasons voted them into the role. Adhering to Freemasonry or any non-Catholic sect, is to be a heretic, and an enemy of the Son of God and His Church. Since the beliefs are contrary, and not under the auspice of the one true living God. Please be warned. In the process of laying out the information and evidence, images and symbols of a satanic nature will be shown by the presenter, in order to validate the testimony. The testimony is eye-opening and highly educational to anyone who has not yet researched this malevolent organization. Well, I need to tell you all something, and it's the most important thing I could ever say to you. In a little while, you'll know for certain that I'm putting my very life on the line and the safety of my family by sharing this with you. So I hope that that buys me at least a few minutes of your precious time. If this video is taken down, it wasn't taken down by me, alright? Now I'm partly doing this to wash your blood off my hands. Because God saved my life on a midnight highway one fateful night for this very cause. And he's watching. As he clearly proved that night, see I should be dead. My sleeping driver was hurling us toward a concrete wall at 100 kilometers an hour when an angel of God was sent to wake me up from a deep sleep with just a whisper and just in time. And for what? Not so I could win X Factor or buy that dream Porsche or marry that dream girl. But for this, for these words, for this moment, so I can tell you something, so I can warn you about something. Nothing could be more important than this. So cancel that movie you wanted to watch. Skip that gym session. Don't scroll down to the next post. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Now, don't worry about the quality of the video or the audio. Just focus on the content. Listen to my voice and trust your eyes. Most of you won't care for the shocking thing I'm about to expose to you. Because no one cares. No one cares. Not my exes, former friends, former bandmates, work colleagues, parents, family members, strangers. No one cares. But still, I'm doing all this for one person. One single human being out there. God is calling you. And he's looking for the last ones before the storm. And if you think you know where I'm going with this, please... Keep watching, because the most important part of this video comes at the end. Now, everything you're about to hear is a fact, and I'll prove it to you. I will leave no room for doubt. And nothing can stop what's coming. So this isn't a call for an uprising, boycott, protest. No. The Titanic is sinking, and it's unstoppable. All I'm going to do is point you to the life raft, and if you want to ignore me, then fine, proceed at your own peril. God knows I've tried. If you want to mock me, then at least share the video. Let others mock me too. Tell your friends. Check this freak out. Anything to help me reach someone who has eyes to see and ears to hear. And like I said in a few minutes, you'll know why my well-being is in danger and that of my loved ones too. Now let me ask you something real quick. Who do you think, generally speaking, runs the world? 
What type of people are the leaders of our countries and corporations? And the rich and the famous too. I mean, like, are they Christians? Do Christians run the world? Well, no, of course not. Buddhists? No. Do Muslims run the world? No. What about atheists? It's got to be atheists, right? Because we've come such a long way as a society, and atheism is the rational state of mind for the modern type of person, right? No. What about a mixture of people? Different types of people run the world. Let me tell you something. All the leaders from Africa to Europe to the Middle East, Israel, Syria, Iran, all the way to the Americas, all these people, and we'll get to the celebrities in a second. They're not atheists, Buddhists, or Muslims. No. What if I told you that they all belong to the same religion, a secret religion, one that none of them are allowed to talk about, one that you should worry about because it affects you beyond belief in ways that you never imagined. Before I tell you what this worldwide secret religion thinks of you and plans to do to you, let me tell you what this religion is. And how do I know about this religion? Because I used to belong to it. And today I'm renouncing it publicly, breaking my oath of silence, which they imposed upon me and every single other member during ceremonies under the, under the penalty of death. That's why my life is in danger. Every person you're about to see has taken the same oath as I did, over and over, no matter where on earth they're from, including Scott Morrison, your Prime Minister and mine. But see, I was plucked from it, saved from its camouflaged clamps, from its extravagant deception and its spiritual corpse by none other than God Almighty. No one else is going to tell you this. Not your favourite singer or politician who more than likely also belong to this hidden religion. No way will they speak because they love it. They love their lives. They love their success, the money, the worship they receive. And then there are those who have left but have never broken their oath out of fear. Trust me, you don't know who you're messing with here. The few that have spoken out, well, they lost everything. Or either their reputations and livelihoods are threatened or destroyed, or they're framed for a crime and end up in jail, or they're murdered and made to look like an accident or suicide. Now, just for the record, the God that saved me, which God was that? Jesus Christ, of course, the one and only. And he is the only one they hate, along with his disciples. So... I'm invincible until he's done with me. That's why I don't fear him. Now, please don't let the name of Jesus scare you off just yet. Because if you're an atheist, you're especially going to want to hear this. Christians and atheists are the most pathetic bunch in the eyes of this ancient religion, the one that rules them all. And I'm only going to show you the tip of the iceberg. And just like an iceberg... The full body of this secret religion continues down past the line of sight, beneath the ocean. It widens in mass and scope until it continues further into the depths, into ever-increasing darkness and invisibility, until it reaches its foundations, which is firmly established in thick blackness, completely unimaginable and not perceived at all to those who only ever get to see its tip peeking out of the ocean top including most of its members, at least 75%, 80 And unless you're a member of this religion and this secret society, as they call it, you won't be granted access to the world stage or of a position of influence. It's become a prerequisite for success now. Now that they've gained pretty much full control and their members are in every place of prominence and power. So brace yourself for the truth that has been hiding in plain sight every day of your life and for the mind-blowing out of this world climax to this video. Now look at this. There's a few different ways they display their allegiance. They don't do it often and some don't do it at all. But most of them can't help themselves because when they do it in public, it's a hidden statement. And that statement gives them a lot of satisfaction. The celebrities usually cover one eye or hide it in some way, 
and obscure it or emphasize it like this. Or they close one eye or peek through it through this hand gesture. All to highlight one single eye. It's called the all-seeing eye. Other times they'll just display a drawn eye somewhere or a tattoo of it. The other method they use is what's commonly known as the hidden hand. Here, for example, River Phoenix is doing both the hidden hand and the all-seeing eye. So you can see the direct connection between the two. But in the political world, usually it's done with the hidden hand. And of course, this. That's a secret handshake for the members of the secret one-eyed religion. We'll start with Scott Morrison here. Hidden in plain sight, as usual, for everyone to not see, as usual. Look at the handshake. I was taught this very handshake, or grip as they call it, during my time in this great school of deception. Here's a picture of a normal handshake. And here's the secret handshake. Normal. Secret. Now here's Scott Morrison with Daniel Andrews. Normal handshake. Secret handshake. All of them are sworn to secrecy under the penalty of death. And remember, I'll prove it to you very soon. Here's former Prime Minister John Howard giving the secret handshake. And Kevin Rudd bowing down to, to this bloke in front of Julia Gillard. All of whom are members of the religion. And Tony Abbott, you'll see in a second. And he's Julia again. Now, I once heard Julia being asked in a brief interview on TV while she was the Prime Minister. The interviewer asked her, what religion are you? My ears pricked up as I was eating breakfast and I froze to hear the answer. And she actually said, with a sinister smirk, I'm a member of a secret society. Next question, please. And what happened? Nothing. No one cared. No one cared that the person who represents them just confess that she's a member of a secret society, when the Australian society is at large the only society sh that should matter. And why is it a secret in the first place? I'll show you. Very soon you'll know their beliefs, and you'll know their master plan, and you'll know why they take such extreme precautions with such hideous oaths of silence under the unbelievable penalties, including death, to stay hidden from the public. So what's the name of this religion? Well, I'll tell you right now. But keep in mind, the magic word you're about to hear only hides the true religion inside of itself. That's how it's secretly flourished to spread like a cancer around the world. It's a religion within a fraternity. The name of the international fraternity, the one that camouflages, conceals, and cloaks the secret religion inside it, is this. Freemasonry. This is their official symbol, the square and compass. Sometimes with a G in the middle, and sometimes with the eye, the all-seeing eye. This is the same eye that these people are referring to. That's where it comes from. The eye is sometimes placed in a triangle, and that's where this comes from, the eye in the triangle. Here's Chris Angel doing it, standing also next to a, a mate with a square and compass shirt on. Not a coincidence. And this is not something Jay-Z invented. This is the religion Jay-Z belongs to, and proudly, as you're about to see. The Freemasons also place the eye at the top of a pyramid, because the Egyptian pyramid is integral to their secret system. Here it is on Chris Angel's shirt and Madonna's jacket. That's a Masonic symbol. The Freemasons are sometimes called the Masons for short. It'll all come together and make sense really soon. Here it is hidden in plain sight at the Australian MTV Awards. And this is the MTV headquarters, by the way. Trust me, there's no doubting this. Here's the same eye in a pyramid on a crowded house logo. Yes, initiated Freemasons. Here's the eye on the Harbour Bridge for a New Year's, Eve, New Year's Eve gig. And I wonder what that eye could be referring to. So what's the connection? 
the religion is the connection, the secret religion. And you'll see. Prepare yourself for an incredible revelation and the amazing climax that comes at the end of this video. Now this is where the Freemasons are counting on you to lose interest or roll your eyes and move on. Because in their beliefs, the uninitiated, meaning you, are ignorant and stupid compared to them. You're technically called the vulgar and the profane. Please prove them wrong. Prove them wrong and stay with me just a little longer. Now the secret identity of this one eye lies in the heart of this religion that lives, breathes, feeds and grows deep inside of Freemasonry. And Freemasonry camouflages it very successfully. So it goes undetected and undisturbed until it ultimately fulfills a thing called the great work. That's what they call it. And they will succeed very shortly. Nothing can stop it now. And I think some of you can sense that something's coming. And who do we trust more than anyone in the world right now? This bloke. And there he is, giving the sign of the hidden hand in front of the whole world. The hidden hand sign is technically, technically called the sign of the master of the second veil in Freemasonry. Veil, get it? Meaning hidden. Now, am I saying that this thing that's happening in the world isn't real? No. I'm saying this. Spoken like a true Freemason. And you remember this guy? A safe place and a dangerous place. We must treat this uh, new world order, new, this new world of COVID, we must treat this new world of COVID even in our own homes. So what is this new world order that he accidentally mentioned? It's common language in Freemasonry, and it has been for a long time. For at least this long. Since the US $1 bill. Hidden in plain sight, complete with the pyramid in the eye. It's the ultimate goal of this religion. And I'll show you what the great work is, at any cost. And Australia, like every other country, is now up to its neck in this pyramidal, one-eyed, occult religion. You think there's nothing hidden on our own money? What about this shadow of a bloke? Who's he hiding in the background? Well, these numbers right here will tell you. And I'll show you that too. Did you know there's a giant pyramid in Australia? You want to see it? Sitting right at the center of Australian power? Look closely, because you'll miss it. Because that's the way they designed it. There it is. Hang on. Do you see it yet? And what about now? That is the frame of an Egyptian pyramid, which we can now firmly call a Masonic pyramid, complete with a missing capstone. And if you're still in doubt that you're looking at a pyramid, there you go. A perfect two scale pyramid hiding out of sight inside the giant frame that surrounds it. This is going to be so unbelievable to you that you probably won't believe it. Or if you're that far gone, if you really have lost touch with your own soul, you won't care and you'll miss the opportunity to have your own eyes open first to the worst news and then to the best news you could ever wish for on this godforsaken planet in which you're destined to lose everything you have and everything you love until eventually you lose yourself. We have to establish what this religion that's hiding inside of Freemasonry actually is, and we will. And it's shocking, but it's reality. The symbol of the Freemasons itself is not what it seems. It's a squaring compass on the surface, but it conceals something, something that will become obvious when I show you. But before we uncloak Freemasonry to see its true nature, its ugly face and its shameful nakedness, because I gave you my word that I'm going to prove it to you. This is the oath they have to take. This is the oath that I took. And your favorite actors and singers, just about all your heroes, just about. Even some of your relatives who probably have no idea what Freemasonry is or was and why they took such gruesome oaths. 
So for those who are going to say, my grandfather was a Freemason and he was a great bloke, or don't the Freemasons run that retirement home? Just wait. Because I'm talking to Freemasons here as well. And don't you worry, they're going to come out of the woodworks. But they're all under the oath of secrecy. Don't forget that, no matter who they are. Adele, Neil Finn, Chris Angel, or Scott Morrison. The oath comes first. And here it is. This is taken from an official Masonic publication, not intended for the public. This is Duncan's Ritual of Freemasonry. In brief, I, of my own free will and accord, do hereby promise and swear that I will never reveal any of the secrets, arts, parts, point or points of the Master Mason's degree to any person or persons whomsoever. This I solemnly, sincerely promise and swear under no less penalty than having my body severed in two, my bowels taken out and burnt to ashes, so no more remembrance be had of so vile and wicked a wretch as I, should I ever violate my Master Mason's obligation. So now you know what they think of me. I'm a vile and wicked wretch for breaking my oath. So how can anyone ever trust a Freemason when he speaks about Freemasonry? Unless you're speaking to a rare breed like me. Never reveal any parts, not even a single point, to anyone. Here's another penalty from another degree, this time from Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry, a legitimate Masonic publication for instructing and laying out the ritual. Binding myself under no less penalty than having my throat cut across, my tongue torn out by the roots, and my body buried in the rough sands of the sea. These are the penalties they swear to. And yes, the Lodge has penal authority to execute. This is how they look when they're initiated. They have to remove all their clothing and jewelry, including wedding rings, crucifixes, the most meaningful things to them, no matter what. They have to go, because complete allegiance to the society is required. You're blindfolded at every initiation because you symbolize someone who lives in utter darkness before you receive the light of Freemasonry. And that light will become so obvious to you in a bit. The secret that is being unveiled by incremental degrees to the candidates in the Lodge is staring us in the face in daily life. And that truth is pretty scary if all you know and all you have is this world. But they know much more than that. At one point, when the blindf blindfold comes off, this is what you're surrounded by. Blokes dressed like this, holding swords to your face. And that's nothing compared to what comes later. So your own wife or daughter don't qualify for discussion in these matters, unless they too are initiated to the same level as you. So please don't tell me that your grandfather or your neighbour is a Freemason and that there's nothing wrong with Freemasonry. How would you know when they're under oath never to reveal anything to anyone? The whole successful system is constructed by the art of lying to the public and to their own members of lower degrees. And we trust these people. Now here are the illustrations for the signs and handshakes. And you only receive them after the oath has been taken. This is the sign you do upon entering and exiting the ritual room while facing the Grand Master. It stands for throat slit, and it goes like this. A continual reminder of where you are and what awaits you if you have a change of heart or rebellious spirit. And here you have the illustrations of the secret handshakes. Look familiar? And this is the sign of the master of the second veil. See? Purely Masonic. You don't pick this stuff up off the street. Now this is how it's generally executed in the public arena. Sneaky, sneaky, huh? So when you see this, 
or this, you know for certain where it comes from and who they belong to. Look at Kramer on the front page of the privately circulated Freemason magazine. Officially a Mason, like fellow brother Tony Abbott, and he's doing this. That's a direct link to the mysterious all-seeing eye of Freemasonry. There it is on the walls of the inside of a lodge room. So there's no reason to doubt that those who do this belong to this. This is another sign they do quite prominently. It's the sign of silence. This is from Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry again, a finger over the lips. Now these signs are slightly morphed over time, so covering the mouth in, the, in a variety of ways is the expression of being bound to secrecy and silence. Silence or death, as little Wayne here is portraying. Here's the oath of a second degree Freemason on page 21 of Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry. Binding myself under no less penalty than having my left breast torn open and my heart and vitals taken out, thrown over my left shoulder, should I willfully transgress any part of this my solemn oath. In this degree, the penalty is to have your whole body dissected, bowels removed and heart cut into pieces and thrown into a field where you are eaten by animals, all to protect the secret religion of the rich, powerful and famous. In the Knights Templar degree, the penalty is to have your head cut off. Listen to this penalty. And this one has happened throughout history more than any other because it works so well without having to resort to death or the threat of death. And it's easier to execute. Now this applies to all areas of industry. It's done through the ruining of your reputation by fellow Freemasons, pointing him out to the world as an unworthy vagabond by opposing his interests, making life very hard for you, by deranging his business, by transferring his character wherever he may go, and by exposing him to the contempt of the whole fraternity, the secret society, and the world. Wow. How many people do you think they've threatened, ruined, framed, cheated, and utterly destroyed to protect their secret religion? And in case you think the Masonic Lodge hasn't got the authority over the initiates, especially the ones in the high degrees, this is from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Under mandate, the orders and decrees of the Grand Master or of a Grand Lodge are called mandates, and implicit obedience to them is a Masonic obligation. And in Sickles' Monitor of Freemasonry, you plainly see they have a right to kill. A Lodge has a right to exercise penal authority over its members, exercise the penalties. So don't let a Mason tell you, oh no, that's, that's just symbolic, the oath. Their laws are above the law of the land, and the proof are the oaths themselves. Because in normal society, you can't ask someone to accept having their throat slit as a penalty in order to be a member of any club or workplace. Unheard of. But not in Freemasonry, not in the secret society world. I told you, you don't know who you're dealing with and what's coming for us all. Here's what they think of the public. Here in speaking to the candidate, it's stated, but have a care not to defile the sanctuary by a spirit of curiosity, meaning don't try to join us just for fun. And take care not to increase the number of the vulgar and profane, meaning don't invite too many outsiders to join because they're vulgar and they're profane. This is more or less an invitation-only fraternity. Here from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry again, written for Masons only and written by 33rd degree Masonic legend Albert Mackey, stating the same thing. Masonic definition of profane. One who is ignorant of the sacred rites, the sacred rites of Freemasonry. One who is not allowed to enter the temple and behold the mysteries. And here, being uninitiated. That's the world at large. And here, from this old ritual book writ written by the same legendary author, in the 33rd degree initiation, the mason drinks wine from a human skull, which has been the cause for a few to leave masonry, because they wonder, whose skull is this? In the 30th degree, part of the ritual involves stabbing skulls. Illustrated right here. 
The process of submitting the member further and further involves things like this. See, the candidate who's seeking admission into the next degree to receive more light has to be humiliated and intimidated. This guy here has his foot on the candidate's head. This is what our celebrities and politicians and the most prominent members of our society have done and continue to do. No one is exempt from this. And this is the intimidating and frightening path that you must take that binds you to the secret society before you are revealed the true beliefs of the religion. So can you see the risks I'm taking? You have to stay till the end. Don't let me down. Don't let yourself down or your fellow man. Believe me, it'll be worth it. Now, here's one of the three greatest Freemasons of all time who actually helped construct the 33 degrees or rituals of modern Freemasonry, Albert Pike, a hideous man with a deeply complicated mind and one who will soon help you to see who they really are. This is how important he is to Freemasonry. He's buried here in the House of the Temple, a Washington Masonic Lodge just around the corner from the White House. He was called the Grand Commander Sovereign Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry, a giant of this secret society, the only Confederate general who has his own statue. And who were the Confederates? The dudes that fought for slavery, not against it, defeated by Abraham Lincoln, who was surrounded by these Freemasons and who was assassinated by this one, John Wilkes Booth, doing the same Sign of the Master of the Second Veil. A Freemason assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Undisputable when you have the eyes to see. Now, Albert Pike writes in his colossal work, which some refer to as the Bible of Freemasonry, called Morals and Dogma. And on page 113, he says, What can there be in common between the vile multitudes and the sublime wisdom? That's what Freemasons possess, sublime wisdom. That's what their secret is. It's sublime. The secret I'll reveal to you. Now, just quickly, here's Freemason Kanye West. Here he's giving the Masonic grip to his brother Mason Jay-Z. Look at the lapel he's wearing in this picture. It's the same double-headed eagle as on the front cover of the so-called Bible of Freemasonry, Morals and Dogma, written by the Grand Commander Sovereign Pontiff of the religion that Kanye and Jay-Z have been sworn into and thus granted access to international success. His Christian conversion isn't what it seems, and you'll soon see what job he has to do. Now look at what else Freemasonry thinks of the uninitiated, from the words of the Grand Commander himself. The truth must be kept secret, and the masses need a teaching proportioned to their imperfect reason. I hope you're listening, because we're about to get going here. These truths were covered from the common people, as with a veil. There's that veil again. And the mysteries were carried into every country. Freemasonry was secretly imported from the East into the whole world to weave its web in the darkness to increase and advance its agenda. The sages, meaning the enlightened ones, always had an esoteric creed unknown to the vulgar. And here he says, to the end that the vulgar heard, seeing might not see anything and hearing might comprehend nothing. Are they right? Am I wasting my time laying it all down for nothing? Because they know you so well? Your favorite celebrity and politician's secret religion is beyond the, re the reach of the vulgar. Vulgar is what you are to them. He won't tell you. She won't tell you. And they won't tell you. Because the other obscene penalties from the rituals of Freemasonry include having your ear and hand chopped off or both hands, being hung in your own home, and my personal favorite, having the top of your skull cut off so your brain is cooked in the sun. Now, can you imagine what they're hiding? And then the ritual monitor goes on to illustrate the same secret handshakes and signs Hidden hand, sign of silence. These people mocking us, sometimes to our face with their symbolism, while we respect them, admire them, 
and sometimes even love them and idolize them, all of them partaking in the same initiation rituals to belong to the secret society, a prerequisite for success, to belong to the religion that gives you everything you want, everything your heart desires. While the Gospels teach accurately that the heart is wicked. Now he is a practical example of how Freemasonry comes first, even above the title of president. He is a portrait of George Washington doing the sign of the master of the second veil. And here, Freemason, before and above president. And if you think that's just by chance that they put the word Freemason above president, then here, read this genuine quote from Harry Truman. This should tell you how deep the consequences of Masonic initiation go and what lies deep within. It's Freemasonry above everything else. There's the Queen showing her allegiance over and over. And here's the Queen leaving a very special hospital with a very special nurse. And this was the Queen's father, fully dressed in his Masonic regalia and that godforsaken apron they wear which also hides something, just like the square and compass. In fact, what the apron hides is what the square and compass really represents. And it's staring you right in the face. Can you see it yet? Prince Charles, handshake, hidden hand. Prince Harry, Prince William. And here is the Grand Master of English Freemasonry, Prince Edward, also in full gear. What a lovely looking chap. And now he's giving the Masonic grip in front of this stone that was placed there to memorialize his visit to Cape Town Lodge. And what about this guy? Prince Philip, husband of the Queen. Do you remember him saying this? Yeah. And here's the article in case you think he didn't. Initiated member. Do you slowly see what the Masonic mindset is? We are beneath them. And the craziest thing is, if they can turn you into what they think of you, then you deserve what's coming. It's a natural law. It's the law of nature. And I'll soon show you their real Bible, for lack of a better term, which justifies it all. And the one which guides their morals. And it makes a lot of sense. Because the power of the deceptive phenomenon of Freemasonry lies in the fact that it contains real truth. Intertwined with untruth. Now this actual book that guides their morals and plans, it isn't written by hand. And it's been around longer than the Bible. So they think it's pure, sublime as they call it. And it's the foundation on which the religion is built upon. And that Bible, so-called, that unwritten Bible, is the key to unlocking its secrets. I'm going to hand you that key. And it's all going to come together like a flood. So they're going to own it all by their own words and actions. And they're going to introduce us to a new system, a new system of life. But only after a number of shocking events take place which I'm so close to telling you about. But first, I have to tell you the name of the secret religion and the identity of the I. Now, for the few of you that think of hospitals and charities and nursing homes when you hear the word Freemason, a word which I soon hope to never speak again after this video, well, it's a front, a cover story. And like everything else in this presentation, I'm going to show you. This too is for the poor Freemasons that are going to have the call to make an appearance in the comment section trying to defend their beloved fraternity. This is 33rd degree Freemason Manly Hall, who was named Freemason of the Century by the Scottish Rite Journal in 1990. And you'd be surprised how many Masons haven't have heard of him because they don't bother entering the Masonic Library and searching out the mysteries themselves. These same Masons think they know something and they parade themselves on websites and social media calling people like me, oh, he's just an anti-Mason, anti-Mason. Blind fools at best, deceivers at worst. Well, the Freemason of the century wrote in this book and in this chapter, 
Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization, concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect, one visible and the other invisible. The visible society is a splendid camaraderie of free and accepted men and women, enjoined to devote themselves to ethical, educational, fraternal, patriotic and humanitarian causes and concerns like hospitals and charities. But the invisible society is a secret and most august fraternity whose members are dedicated to the service of a mysterious arcanum arcanorum, meaning mystery of mysteries. <sighs> now I wonder what that could be. So once again, don't listen to the lost or deceptive masons that'll come here trying to cheat you from the truth, telling you that I don't know what I'm talking about or calling me an anti-mason. Because there you just heard it. There's a masonry for the majority of masons, and then there's the real thing, the secret religion, which should shock you when it's announced. These same lost or deceptive Masons also love to repeat, like parrots, that Freemasonry is not a religion. Well, what does the Freemason of the century have to say about that? From this book, he writes, Masonry is essentially a religious order. Not just a little bit religious, but essential. And here, the iconic giant of Freemasonry says in Morals and Dogma, every Masonic lodge is a temple of religion. And its teachings are instructions in religion. So please sit down, Masons, because Freemasonry is a religion. And soon I'm going to tell you what it's really called. Now look at this from the same book and speaking about fellow Freemasons being initiated in the lodge room. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations their true explication is reserved for the princes of Freemasonry. The whole body of the royal art, which you'll know all about soon, was hidden so carefully in the high degrees. So you see, the whole thing is built on lies. And the ultimate liar lives inside the triangle above the pyramid, so that even the highest Masons are living a monstrous lie. Wake up, Masons. Even you are deceived just as the public is, unless, of course, you're hungry enough to want to acquire all the power and climb up that pyramid closer to the eye that sees all. In that case, close your mouth, go back to your lodge, and good luck to you. Or, of course, grow some kahunas and be honest. But then you can't, right, because you'd be breaking your oath. Sad. Oh, it's good to be free under the wing of the true master. Stick around if you're interested and you'll get to see some wonder. When I pull that cloak called Freemasonry right off and those that are still here watching will get to see the true colours of the nakedness and the horror of the Masonic Lodge and the religion that rules them all. Another thing that Masons will repeatedly say is that this has nothing to do with Freemasonry and it's just a conspiracy theory. Well, the 33rd degree Freemason of the century also wrote this book about a hundred years ago, The Secret Destiny of America. And look at the front cover. And I'll tell you why America is so important for the ultimate goal of the secret society. It's disturbing, but it's also essential in understanding the near future and what's going to take place. So for the Freemasons that still say that this is not a Masonic design, especially this Masonic website called Masonic Info, insisting here that even the eye in the triangle or pyramid is not Masonic. Completely laughable and pure disinformation for the stupid masses. Try arguing against this. This is from a 1960 copy of the New Age magazine, an official organ of the Supreme Council of 33rd Degrees. No higher authority in the United States to speak of the relationship between Freemasonry and the US $1 bill. Masonic symbolism in a $1 bill. Look at them all. 13 leaves, 13 bars, 13 feathers, so on and so forth, and of course, this. The Masonic all-seeing eye. Located in the pyramid. So, you think this is a conspiracy theory? 
or just a plain conspiracy? Well, he's JFK, yes, a Freemason, but one who had enough. When he wanted to print money, disassociated from the Masonic central banks, just like Abraham Lincoln, and he paid the price for it as well. Listen to the speech we never hear about in school. More proof that they control the education system here and everywhere. Please, just have a quick listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people.
as I said in the beginning, you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg peeking out from the ocean top. I told you, all personalities in the field of great influence are initiated members of Freemasonry. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Within 60 seconds of me telling you what international Freemasonry really is, I'll prove it to you. Unequivocally, within 60 seconds. And then I'm going to drive it home, and then I'm going to show you what they're planning with this new age they're implementing, and then the conclusion, which is by far the most important part of this presentation. So when you hear me tell you the truth in just a moment, don't switch off in disbelief, because you can't believe that your favorite idol or whoever could possibly be involved, like you know them or something. You don't know these people. You do know that they're under oath never to reveal their beliefs to you. The vile multitude. It's time to trust your eyes now, not your feelings, especially after all that I've shown you. This is why the secret religion is so hidden. This is why it's so ingeniously designed through layers of lies upon lies, cloak upon cloak, and oath upon oath, concealing the truth for its chosen few. What is Freemasonry? What is the most secret yet most powerful religion in the world? Well, that's easy. We live in an evil, evil world. So there's only one religion that befits it. Freemasonry is Satanism in disguise. Now start the clock. From morals and dogma, prepared for the Supreme Council for 33rd degree. That's the highest degree in Freemasonry and written by the undisputed heavyweight champion of modern Freemasonry, Albert Pike. On page 321, he boldly states, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not. Did you hear that? Lucifer is God, and do not doubt it. Come on now, stay with me. Hear from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, written by 33rd degree Freemason, a beloved member of the craft, Albert Mackey. He tells us whose name represents the good principle in Freemasonry's secret worldview, writing under the Masonic meaning of the word pentagram. He says that the pentagram, depending on its position, represents good or evil. See how he puts the positive aspect in the first position? Good first, evil second. Good or evil, light or darkness, victory or death, initiation or profanation, Lucifer or Vespa. Lucifer is good. Lucifer is light. Lucifer is victory. And Lucifer is true initiation. See, if you're not initiated, you're profane. If you haven't figured out that God is Lucifer, you're vulgar and profane. You're stupid in their own words. That's the beginning of their big secret. God is the devil, and we're already in hell right now. Now from the Freemason of the Century, Manly Hall, and this will make it three out of three legends of Freemasonry stating the same thing. In the Lost Keys of Freemasonry on page 76, when the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething, surging energies of Lucifer are in his hands. Do you see? The world's hidden religion, with its universal one-eye symbolism, who was revealed slowly and by degrees only to its dedicated members, is Satanism, or Luciferianism as they prefer to call it. Now all the oaths make sense, don't they? Now all the rituals make sense. Now all the penalties make sense. And their secret signs and symbols and handshakes all make sense. While the bulk of Freemasons make the external image of the fraternity and know nothing of who rules over them and who or what they're protecting. But which craft do you think the Freemason of the century is talking about here? Which craft? Which craft? Which craft? 
witchcraft. You need to slowly wake up now. Witchcraft is the royal art of Freemasonry, jealously guarded and reserved for the few. I'll show you clear as day that this is in fact, is in fact true. This is the symbol of Satanism. And this is the symbol of the Lodge of Female Freemasonry called the Order of the Eastern Star. Look at that. Satanism, Freemasonry. Trust your eyes. This is the symbol of the Church of Lucifer founded by a 33rd degree Freemason, which I'll prove. Look at the Masonic squaring compass in the design. The Church of Satan and Lucifer. Two sides of the same coin, nurtured and brought to an organized international level of power and influence by Freemasonry, in secret, and all done right under our noses. And if you think that your politicians or religious leaders or favorite idols can't be a part of this, you have to try and snap out of it or suspend your everyday beliefs just for a moment. And I will clearly show you how it's not only possible, but it's actual. Please, I feel like it's now or never. If you don't get a glimpse of this now, then when? Who else is going to tell you this? When will you next be confronted with this? This is reality. And as much as you thought that ordinary people came into positions of power through hard work or concern for society or family connections combined with brains and talent, that's not the case. That's the fantasy. This is the reality. They all go through Freemasonry. You think that Sam Worthington was so talented that he was picked over all those American actors to star in Avatar? Of course not. He was a Freemason. And so was the director, James Cameron, of the highest caliber. You have to remember that to them, Lucifer is good. Lucifer is the liberator. Jesus is the suppressor. Lucifer is pure love. Jesus is impure love. Lucifer left heaven for you. Jesus was crucified because he was a false messiah. The world has always been deceptive and we have been magnificently deceived. Here is an incredible example. Pay attention. This should blow your mind. Charles Darwin, the father of atheism and rationalism, was an initiated Freemason. Doing the hidden hand of Freemasonry in this picture and the vow of silence in this one. This would have re remained unknown to us because no one's going to teach us this. But now we have the tools to see his beliefs, not through his words, but through his signs and symbols. I told you, they can't help but to show off their religions. Because they think we're stupid, vile and ignorant. And I've proven that to you as well. So once again, are you going to prove them right by switching off and ignoring this? Well, unfortunately, more than 90% of you will. What I'm giving you here is priceless knowledge because no amount of money or success can substitute its importance. And I'm risking everything, everything but my own salvation to share it with you. If only for the, for the few of you. Think about what you've just seen here with Charles Darwin because I don't know if you got it. You cannot be accepted as a candidate of Freemasonry unless you believe in a supreme being as exemplified here with Phil Collins, speculated by some to be an atheist, but this seems impossible because being a Freemason, he has to believe in a higher power, or more accurately, supreme being. And I can personally vouch for that. And look here in the Masonic Oath itself. The candidate says, I will not aid or be present at the initiation of an atheist, a madman, or a fool. Freemasonry believes that to be an atheist is to be the equivalent of a madman. And they're right. Yet while they propagate atheism around the world, in universities and schools, Charles Darwin himself was a believer in an intelligent designer, a supreme being. He had to be because he's a Freemason. And that intelligent designer that gave birth to us is named Lucifer in the highest degrees of Freemasonry. See? Never tell. He lied to you because that's what Freemasons do. The whole thing is a giant lie that was carefully constructed by mutilating the truth because mutilated truths make the most successful lies. 
This is the secret to their success, a lying tongue and a lying spirit from the first degree to the 33rd degree, to each other and to us. I've proven that as well. And what did Jesus, how did he, how did he describe their God? The father of lies. How accurate. The one who comes to cheat, kill and destroy. How accurate again when I tell you their plans. Look here, Charles Darwin is noted as an influential figure by the Satanic Temple. And proof for them, apart from the intelligent design that is all around us, that Lucifer is real and that he's the god of this realm, is the power of witchcraft or magic. Magic works because there's a hierarchy or a pyramidal power structure in the spirit realm, a realm devoid of any love for you. And these spirits can be conjured up and summoned by the practitioners of the royal art of Freemasonry. They ask for something in return, however. Listen to Bob Dylan, a Freemason. Hidden hand, one-eye symbolism. Out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where uh, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. How does one communicate with Bob Dylan's chief commander, Lucifer? By the jealously guarded Royal Art of Freemasonry. Witchcraft. This is from the Encyclopedia of American Religions. Secrecy is bolstered by a system of initiations and degrees, the Freemasonic system. The material which is kept secret is the magical knowledge of the group. This knowledge may consist of rituals and powerful magical formulas. Do you think J.K. Rowling is a Luciferian? In this article, J.K. Rowling reveals the inspiration behind the Deathly Hallows symbol. And what is it? The Masonic Squaring Compass, with the one eye that are all the celebrities mimic. That's the inspiration. They're all members of the secret society. If you think that doesn't prove anything, here she is with her new tattoo. It says Solve Coagula. Also a song titled by fellow Freemason Marilyn Manson. And where does it come from? Here, the Baphomet. The image of Lucifer as conceptualized by another Freemason, Eliphas Levi, in his book The Doctrine of Transcendental Magic. This horrid thing, with breasts, a penis, and a goat's head with two horns, has these words written on its arms, Solve Coagula. The impact of the meaning of these two words should disturb you to soberness when I tell you about them. Because apart from other things, they involve the process in which the new system will be implemented at unbelievable cost to you and I. Here's a statue of the, ba of the Baphomet at the temple, satanic temple, complete with two little kids admiring it. That's J.K. Rowling's religion, Satanism. The secret religion for the highly evolved and the highly successful. Welcome to the real world. The same Masonic author writes in The Doctrine of Transcendental Magic, in the ceremonies practiced at reception by all secret societies, there are found indications of a doctrine which is everywhere carefully concealed, and that is witchcraft. And in his history of magic, he tells us it is the royal art, and that's what Freemasonry calls it. And where did he get his inspiration for the Baphomet? From the Knights Templar, another secret society who were banned, and some of its members were executed in the 1300s for glorifying evil, as it's openly stated here in the Satanic Rituals. And where do modern day Knights Templars reside now? Within high degree of Freemasonry. Right here. Again from the encyclopedia. And listen to this. The continuing impact of speculative Freemasonry, which means modern day Freemasonry, provided fertile soil in which new magical orders could grow. Magical orders. Meaning other branches of secret societies of which Freemasonry is the umbrella. 
Because Freemasonry is the king of secret societies. Just like JFK tried to tell us, it's the prestigious channel that one must go through. And it is the reason that the oldest religion in the world has made a colossal comeback and is now on the brink of success. Which, as I said, nothing can stop now. And again from the encyclopedia, the groups wear ritual garb and meet in ma magical lodges. And where do Masons meet? In the Masonic Lodge. Like here with a magical pentagram on their checkered floorboard. Are you believing your eyes? Or are you making excuses? Here's another statue of the Baphomet at a satanic temple doing the sign of the horned god Lucifer. The hand sign mimicking the horns on his head. And of course, the upside down cross. And here's Barack Obama doing the same sign. And the sign of silence with a twist. Who do you think he's mocking here? You and I. But mainly Christians. Because Christianity is the one force that has stood between you and the inconceivable horror that is awaiting us and is on its way. Here's an article on Barack Obama, and that's his hands adjusting his presidential seal. And there's his Masonic ring, and the sign of the devil's horns, over and over. Freemasonry and Satanism are intertwined. Look at these Masonic politicians throwing up the devil's horns. George W. Bush. Look how sneaky and sinister the look on his face is he. And the manner in which he's delivering the sign in front of the whole world. Is he a fan of rock music? Is he saying, I love you in sign language for the deaf, like some people like to say? This is his fraternal order called Skull and Bones, also known as the Order of Death, where you lie naked in a coffin with what's called a temple prostitute during initiation. Clearly a Masonic order with this guy displaying the hidden hand of Freemasonry. In Stanley Kubrick's last movie before his death, he's telling you that all prominent members of industry, including politics, as the movie goes on to show, are members of a satanic secret society. In it, he shows the members engage in an orgy and feast after the ceremony of dedication to their horned god. To identify which secret society he's referring to, he leaves the clues in the artwork. Not once, not twice but three times, the one-eyed religion. And who do you think the title of the movie is dedicated to? None other than the stupid, ignorant and uninitiated masses watching the movie. And you know it now. He knew that when we'd leave the cinema, we'd be commenting on the performance of Tom Cruise or giggling about the orgy scene or just being disappointed because the movie went too long or some other meaningless critique with eyes wide shut. Look at the cover of his other movie, A Clockwork Orange. The eye on top of the pyramid. And on his shirt, the word devil in Italian. Let me take it up a notch, in case this isn't registering. Listen to the founder of the Satanic Church, Anton LaVey, tell us in his book, The Satanic Rituals, which is a companion to the Satanic Bible, Masonic Orders have contained the most influential men in many governments and virtually every occult order has many Masonic roots. This is back in 1972 he said this. Now 40 years later it should read all governments, not many. And why is the founder of the Church of Satan talking about Freemasonry, the most respectable and charitable fraternity in the world that no one seems to talk about and that we never hear about in school? This is why. Because the satanic ritual is a blend of Gnostic, Kabbalistic, Hermetic, and Masonic elements. That's crazy because Freemasonry is a blend of Gnostic, Kabbalistic, and Hermetic elements too. Any Masonic writer will confirm that. But how can that be? Because Freemasonry is Satanism in disguise. On page 106... Every right of the Black Order employed Masonic principles. Every right of these Black Orders, one of which was called Freunden von Lucifer, which translates to Friends of Lucifer. And guess what? There are numerous manifestations of Satanism in Masonic ritual, including the goat, the coffin, and the death's head. 
Please awaken, O sleeper, and let the glorious light of the truth dawn upon your sleepy eyes. How did Freemasonry get away with this? Just like Jesus, the greatest enemy of theirs said they would, by dressing the wolves as sheep. A satanic underground, carefully cloaked in tr Christian trappings. That's how Freemasonry got away with it. We can't find out about it because they run the media and the education system clearly. John F. Kennedy was brutally assassinated after he attempted to inform us that we are opposed around the world by a monolithic conspiracy. Did he know that Lucifer was the god of Freemasonry? I don't know. The Grand Master of my lodge, who was the mayor of the city, was a 32nd degree Freemason. That's one short of the top, one short of the true beginning of the secret religion. And he had no idea what Freemasonry really was. After 42 years in the lodge, they never invited him into the 33rd degree initiation because he couldn't see past the Christian trappings as they were designed to do exactly that, trap the Christian or trap anyone else who was too sensitive to behold the truth. Thus, Freemasonry could halt their progress at any time without suspicion because it's a rare thing to reach the 33rd degree and every Freemason knows that. So that there are no rude awakenings that take place with those that aren't ready to embrace Lucifer as the true God of Freemasonry and the world. This is an ingenious system birthed by what must have been demonic inspiration. Anton LaVey says that this ingenious system I speak of serves as a rudimentary screening process for organized Satanism. Exactly right. It's a filtering process, as I've said earlier, an international filtering process from which men and women are picked and permitted to enter the world stage. And I'm saying all this for those who naively think that politics and magic ritual do not mix. That's the founder of the Satanic Church. He admits that. Admissions that were never heeded because no one cares. How else did the Freemasons pull the wool over our eyes? The companion to the Satanic Bible tells us that as well. By filling the world with fools. And who's the biggest fool in the eyes of Freemasonry? An atheist. From the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. One who does not believe in the existence of God. Such a state of mind can only arise from the ignorance of stupidity. All this time, you're laughing at Christians and the Freemasons are laughing at you. He's Brad Pitt wearing his Masonic ring and covering his eye. Now here's a genuine quote from Brad Pitt, the Freemason. In short, I could really try on something different for myself. That was Satanism. It's working out really well. I made a pact. That's why. You don't believe him? Bob Dylan does. And the hand sign they all do. Allow me to show you what it symbolizes. And now that you know what you know, it should make sense to you. It stands for 666. Yes, indeed. Satan's number foretold by Jesus Christ. Now just hang on, let me prove it to you. Here it is for all to see on this shirt design, worn by Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash. See the eye in the middle of the six, repeated three times at 666. In this one, the design in the shirt is clearly demonstrated by the person wearing it. Another example, the hand sign with three sixes on the shirt. Here's a movie poster, the hand sign and the six on his lapel. Connect the dots. Here's Don Cheadle, the hand sign, and here he covers one eye with the dice. What's the number on the dice that he holds toward the camera? Six. There's literally three sixes that manifest in the hand sign itself, like this. That's why they do it. Here's Drake with the most obvious example, holding up the hand sign with the all-seeing eye of Lucifer on his bicep. And here, blatantly connecting the six to the hand sign on the artwork to one of his songs. 
the hand sign over one eye, obviously signifying a six. This is proof. The number is mystical and it's grounded in reality and it's related to sex rituals within witchcraft. You'll see, I'll show you. But if that's not enough, there. Drake is clearly intending that hand sign to be a way of communicating the number 666. A hater of Christianity and Jesus Christ. But I wonder why. He has everything he desires. Christians aren't suppressing him. He doesn't hate Buddha or Muhammad. None of them do. No, no. Jesus is who they hate. But they protect Freemasonry by communicating its presence in their lives, not by word, but by symbols and signs. Disciples of Lucifer. While you don't believe it, they take it very seriously. And they mock you by displaying it in your face. They know the truth. The chief commander, the one at the top of the pyramid, is Satan. The God of this world, just like Jesus told you who he is. Britney Spears doing the 666 over the eye. And look at this. The devil's horns while she wears the seal of the US $1 bill. Designed by Freemasons. You know why now. You just have to stop denying it. Freemasonry is Satanism in disguise. This is how they tell you. Let's go to Britney's close friend, whom she tongue-kissed in front of the world, sexualized as these people are, and for all the girls out there to be inspired and corrupted by. Madonna. Wearing the same Masonic design as Britney. Triple six hand sign. The one eye symbolism and the vow of silence. The vow of silence with her fellow practitioner of witchcraft. The Masonic eye in the triangle behind her. And now, the upside down cross of Christ on her outfit. A member of the secret society who hates Jesus with a passion. As you can see here, with Lucifer, the god of Freemasonry, giving her oral sex. Deep despisers of Christianity. Are you wondering why yet? The sign of the devil's horns here. Meaningfully placed and done with precise intent. Like with all of them. And here teaching her poor children to follow in her footsteps. Truly only God knows how many young people she's perverted in her career. All orchestrated by Freemasonry. Here's the founder of the Church of Satan again, Anton LaVey, showing the horn sign. The horned god of the witches, as illustrated by Una Woodruff in her book, Witches. And here, with a member of the Agora sect of Hinduism, partaking in a ritual of the oldest religion of the world. She's drinking blood here. From what? A human skull. Sound familiar? That's right. That's what all the high-level Freemasons do, except they use wine, until they themselves are invited into the secret religion. It's ritualistically done to gain magical abilities, not a myth. And look at a hand sign. It's also known as the El Diablo. Do you still think this hand sign is a joke or it's misunderstood or misrepresented by people like me? Look at the cover of Anton's other book called Satan Speaks. Look at the eye. He has one eye emphasized. Can you see? What about the image of Lucifer in the Satanic Temple? Look at the right eye. It's darkened. You ready for this? From the Bible. And this passage is thousands of years old. Woe to the worthless shepherd. His right arm shall be completely withered, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Where do you think this hatred for Jesus comes from? Do you think it's because we've outgrown it? Or because it speaks the truth. Who do you think this worthless shepherd with one eye darkened is? And who said, I am the good shepherd? Who said that? Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, not the worthless shepherd with one eye. You think this is all just a coincidence? Just hang tight a little longer and you will see some wonder. Here's Anton LaVey with Freemason Marilyn Manson, and here's Marilyn covering his eye. In case you forgot that this is the eye of Freemasonry, the international religion they all belong to. 
Here he is, giving the sign of the master of the second veil, the hidden hand of Freemasonry, along with his Masonic ring. You know how many presidents and journalists and common men have tried to expose Freemasonry? Or get it shut down, get it banned? Well, those days are long gone. Marilyn Manson, the Freemason who tears the Bible into pieces on stage during his performances, he captured the fundamental purpose of Freemasonry's existence very well when he said in an interview with Spin Magazine in 1996, Hopefully I'll be remembered as the person who brought an end to Christianity. Echoing the dreams of grandeur, just like his spiritual father. Now Kesha, one eye symbolism of Freemasonry, the eye in the triangle, and the sign of silence. So she's a member. And behold, an inverted cross in her music video, inverted cross on her outfit, and a satanic pentagram on this outfit. Just like the fit symbol of female Freemasonry. You think none of these Freemasons look like witches? Really? And none of these witches in the making? Remember, 90% of them don't know what they're serving, or what they're doing there, or why they're taking oaths of such silence and such penalty. Avril Lavigne does, showing her allegiance with the one-eye symbolism, participating in lesbianism in a video, influencing the masses, subtly stealing her innocence. And what's on her helmet? One eye, and doing the El Diablo with pentagrams at her concert. Anthony Bourdain with his one eye symbolism. He was openly a hater of Christianity. And what kind of woman would suit a man like this? Well, a fellow member of the secret society who hates Christianity too, of course. Asia Argento. One eye symbolism, again and again. The sign of Lucifer's horns, and this pose of his image. Remember the Baphomet. There's Asia mimicking its pose, complete with the finger position. Creatures with breasts and an erect penis and a goat's head. You know, things you find normal now, thanks to international Freemasonry, normalizing evil and filth through multiple levels of, and avenues of propaganda and influence, including television, movies, music, music videos, schools, education, through legislation, through passing of laws to protect the evil nature and of course through your favorite idols. Chris Hemsworth, just your everyday good Aussie bloke, I'm afraid not. One eye symbolism and the sign of silence, both of which mean he's taken all the disgusting oaths of Freemasonry under the penalty of death thus catapulting him over the competition, never to promote Christian values or Jesus Christ again. The triple six hand sign, and now, see how the hand symbol makes sense? Amber Heard, who was married to this Freemason, who's best friends with this Freemason. I told you they only date, marry and associate with their secret society. Here with the triple six over one eye, and this tweet, I think it's a tweet, I don't know. Look at the one I closed, darkened if you will, and identifying its meaning with the devil's hand symbol. Of course, she camouflages the whole thing with her misdirecting words for the dumb masses. But we can see through that now, right? But look, it's Elon Musk replying. He's a fan of Amber Heard. Or is there more to it? Good sign, he says. The sign of the devil's horns. The fertility god. The sex god. That's what he's referring to. Why on earth would he point that out? You know why. But to be sure, let's go to his wife or girlfriend, Grimes. One eye. And whose eye is it? You know that too now. The god of this world. Who hates Jesus Christ just like she does. Two inverted crosses of Christ and the pentagram. And what about Elon's mother? Of course, all members of the secret society. Most of whom, most of us who never even knew it existed. Blink-182 initiated member with some of his secret brothers from the lodge. Vow of silence. Sign of the devil. Cindy Lauper, all seeing eye. Vow of silence. 
the sign of the God of this world. Christian Bale, who thanked Satan at an award show, doing the sign of the master of the second veil, the hidden hand of Freemasonry. Ashley Tisdale, all seeing eye, social media post, and hanging out with her boyfriend, who proudly wears the satanic cross. You think they belong to the same religion? Of course they do. Bonnie Wright, one eye, and the satanic horns. John Cleese, I include him here because he's a well-known hater and mocker of Jesus Christ and Christianity. He got rich off it, and he's a proud Freemason, showing his allegiance. Motley Crue, Nikki Six, Tommy Lee, Vince Neil holding a cross upside down, and their album cover. Secretly Freemasons under oath, while promoting Satanism in the open, doing their job and influencing the masses to hate Jesus and Christianity, and to live a life of sin through seduction of their music. Secret Society member Jimi Hendrix hiding one eye and telling you about the secret powers of music. Nirvana, Kurt, bass player Chris, Dave Grohl, Dave and Jack Black making the sign of the pentagram, a geometric tool used in the magical curriculum, and Dave wearing his upside down cross. Hard to listen to all those beautiful songs he's written now. Courtney Love and her daughter glorifying the symbol of Satan, and Nirvana discovering something on a road trip while covering some numbers up. Proud Satanists, all secret Freemasons. Here's Quentin Tarantino. Now that we know what we know, can you see through this picture to reach its true meaning? The all-seeing eye, whose identity is revealed by the hand gesture, which is 666, with the vow of silence and throwing up the devil's horns, which I hope you can finally see means something. Share. Can this get any more obvious now? The sign of the vow of silence being made with the sign of the devil, telling you that the secret which isn't to be spoken of is Lucifer, right there in front of you, speaking through signs and symbols, like Confucius said, signs and symbols rule the world, not words nor laws. Cardi B, I just want you to see a few connections between the one-eye symbolism, the triple six hand sign, and the horned god symbol. Eddie Izzard, all-seeing eye, hidden hand, and mimicking the horns of the Masonic God. Oh, but men love the darkness rather than light, as the scriptures put it so solemnly. Look at how precise that statement is. With high-ranking Freemasons loving the darkness so much that they define the darkness itself as light. Watch. In MasonicWorld.com, an article by Worshipful Master John Alexander who has journeyed from the lower degrees to the high and sublime degrees. This is the religion of our leaders and celebrities, so listen. He writes, Every ritual from the high and sublime degrees that I have ever read contains the statement, I beg you to observe that the light of a master mason is darkness visible. I put it to you, brethren, that this is the most accurate description of Masonic light that you will ever find. Think about what you just heard, because this is what they learn. Masonic light is darkness. And this is before they enter the real religion of Freemasonry, Satanism. That's why in the high degrees the ritual states to the candidate, I beg of you to observe, meaning to ponder, to contemplate what they mean by the statement. My 32nd degree Grand Master, he never understood. And they don't push you, remember? It's all a screening process to weed out the weaklings who can't handle the truth. The truth that this is how the all-seeing eye sees things. Evil is good, and good is evil. Look at what he says immediately afterwards. In keeping with our normal Masonic practice of burying our important truths deeply, the ritual sets out to immediately disguise this truth. Usually people bury their lies, but Masons bury their truths. Because their truth is that God is the devil, and that we are in hell. So everything has to be flipped on its head in order for things to make sense in this place where lust creates life, where might is right, where compassion is weakness, and of course, in order to succeed. 
Look here with another Freemason of the highest degree, Helena Blavatsky. She writes in her book, The Secret Doctrine. Doctrine means belief. So the book is called The Secret Belief. The Secret Belief of Freemasonry. She says, The sons of God, of whom Satan was one, all those spiritual beings were called angels of darkness because that darkness is absolute light. Do you see how far they go to protect and glorify the darkness? Because men love darkness rather than light. If these were just randoms next door or some minor cult, I wouldn't be telling you about them and I really wouldn't care this much. But these are not randoms. These are our heroes. These are those who have crept into the power structure very slowly since 1717 when the first Masonic Grand Lodge was organized to overthrow Christianity and the world. These are those who we admire, trust. And these are those who have perverted our culture with one hand, the hidden hand, while upholding it with the other hand. So you can never call them out because they're on charities, nursing homes and children's hospitals in the open while they propagate smut, violence, debt, and of course atheism in secret. While a plethora of everyday distractions are endlessly supplied to us through entertainment and news, plowing through our lives. That's political Freemasonry, politicizing everything, including entertainment. Supplying you with their heroes and their idols. And now that 95% of the world have been spiritually disarmed by thinking, oh, the world is a good place and Jesus is a myth, they've rigged our infrastructure and they're about to bring it down so they can build up their new world from the ashes. A completely new system of life on this planet is coming. I promise you that. In a book called Satan's Master Plan, LeVay affirms his commitment to destroy Christianity. Now check out Anton LeVay. Once again, in perfect parallel with Freemasonry, stating in the Satanic Bible, waiting at the darkness visible for that bright and morning star. Bright and morning star being a reference to Lucifer. The exact same expression as the Freemason and worshipful master, John Alexander, that we just heard describing Masonic light. Darkness visible. Identical language. Because Freemasonry is Satanism in disguise. This is what the initiated queen of Freemasonry, Helena Blavatsky, says of the bulk of Freemasons in her book. The knowledge of their members about the full signification of their symbols is nil. And that's of course true to the Freemasons listening. How do I know she's a Freemason? Because her diploma was reproduced on page 66 in Freemasonry Universal, Volume 5, Part 2, in the Autumn Equinox, 1929. And also because she's displaying the Masonic penalty sign, like all these Freemasons. Drew Barrymore, all seeing eye, vow of silence. And see, the symbol of her secret God. Elijah Wood, one eye, hidden hand of Freemasonry. And the Devil's Horns. Sammy Davis Jr., the eye of the Freemasons is the all seeing eye of Lucifer. Because here he is with Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan. So when you see him hanging with other celebrities like Bill Cosby, can you be sure that they belong to the same religion? Sure you can. I told you, they don't hang out with the uninitiated. You think the Rat Pack weren't Freemasons? Well, here's their leader, Frank Sinatra, doing the hidden hand.
And I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna...
poker facing with your sexuality. Um, when I was um, making love to my old boyfriend, I used to think about women sometimes. Oh, good luck. <laughs> I'm sure he was delighted when you told me. Oh, good luck. <laughs> You may feel a small Christ prick. Christ prick.
just, I'd, I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Satan. I'd like to thank Louis Armstrong. I'd like to thank Neil Young. I'd like to thank the Rollins Band. I'd like to thank Bob Marley. I'd like to thank the Marx Brothers. I'd like to thank Salvador Dali. I'd like to thank Louis Bluewell. I'd like to thank Miles Davis. I'd like to thank, thank uh, the Parliament Funkadelic. And uh, I'd like to thank you, too.
there is a fork in the road that's approaching you and you can stay on the path which curves to the left by denying the existence of Satanism in the fullness that you've been shown or you can surrender to the truth and take the right hand path now where that road could lead is the sweetest risk you'll ever take are you still pretending that this one-hour religion of Freemasonry isn't Luciferianism? See, this here is the biggest obstacle you'll ever face. The very thing that could lead you to the prize is the very thing that will keep you from it. The reality of international Satanism. In the shadow of Christianity, Satanism has always been there. With every church that sprung up, so did its invisible enemy the satanic church growing out of sight and out of mind from this to this and Christianity has long been deprived of its power as clearly demonstrable by the absolute lack of preaching against the institution of Freemasonry Satanism's magic cloak Satanism's magic trick that's Freemasonry and how they are laughing for now. So Freemasons are now are at the helm of the power structure of society, which means Satanism rules. And they're making their move for the new order of the ages. Are you that besotted by this evil world that you'll even deny the existence of secret societies? And what about the American president, John Kennedy? Was he just a nut job like me? warning us about an international secret society with an international secret plot a freemason trying to tell you and the world about freemasonry shot through the head i've shown you who they are i've shown you how they successfully operate with degrees of initiations and horrific and illegal oaths of secrecy and i've shown you why they are a secret society i've proven it to you and only now that I've done that, I can show you in this many minutes what the shocking new order that Freemasonry has so cautiously been guiding us toward actually looks like. And of course, you won't believe that either. By now, there's a 98.5% chance that you belong to the world. And in that case, the world can do, will do, and is doing whatever the hell it wants to do with you. And when all you have is the world, you'll do anything to hold on to it. Christian or not, most of you will follow this world straight to the slaughterhouse in the name of peace, safety, and progress. Clinging to it. Because all you love is inside it. Blissfully ignoring people like me, warning you of who's really in charge of it. Men, women, actors, singers, businessmen, and politicians, all interlocked whose God is named Lucifer. You've seen it with your own eyes, but now you can hear it with your own ears from this 33 degree Freemason in person, just in case the Masonic literature wasn't enough for you. Okay, you find Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc Say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy, virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the internet. Oh, uh, God yeah. bless you, Thank brother. You. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, what you're about those hospitals? They, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not, we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 5. You've been bred from childhood to fall for the biggest lie ever told, that Satan doesn't exist. And if Satan doesn't exist, well, then neither does Jesus. And while your heroes, heroes and idols, know full well that they do exist and when I say you've been bred from childhood I mean just that Walter Disney was a high-ranking Freemason he is a Masonic stamp dedicated to him and he's very exclusive Club 33 which stands for the 33 degrees of Freemasonry and who's the god of the 33rd degree Freemason Walt Disney 
Well, Walter hides the answer in plain sight, because that's what Freemasons do. Firstly, the God of Mr. Disney is wicked. See how they veil evil with a cloak of innocence? What does the word veil itself conceal? Secondly, Walter's God is horny, symbolized by the horned God of the witches. And we all know Walt Disney loves magic, which is witchcraft. So the depictions of sex are hidden in plain sight as well. Remember, lust produces life, not love. So lust is purity. Lust is love for the high degree Freemason. And thirdly, he hides the number of his God's name in the open as well. No, no, that's not a triple six he's seeing interwoven in the design. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Not even when they separate the sixes from the name, all three of them, and place them together for you like this, in plain sight. No, not even then will people see. Do you think things are any better 50 years later? Here's the Eye of Lucifer in the, Nick, in the Nickelodeon channel and his lightning flash. Remember what they actually believe about Satan. From Freemason Helena Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, meaning the secret belief, who is Satan? He is the angel who was proud enough to believe himself God, brave enough to buy his independence at the price of eternal suffering and torture, beautiful enough to have adored himself in full divine light, strong enough to still reign in darkness amidst agony. Helena Blavatsky is suggested as recommended reading by the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry right here. And the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry, speaking of Lucifer, Satan and the Devil, on page 407, writes that, To the initiate, the Devil is the instrument of liberty or free will. That's who Lucifer is to them, okay? To show you how little you know of who you're dealing with and the extent of this religion's influence and power, not to mention their plans, let me jump ahead for a minute. Watch this. This is Lucius Trust. The Lucius Trust is a non-for-profit service organization incorporated in the United States in 1922. And their objective from Lucius Trust website, dedicated to the establishment of a new and better way of life for everyone in the world, based on the fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. The divine plan. A new way of life. Like a new world system. Like a new order. Now, you want to see who they work for? The Lucius Trust has consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. The United Nations, the UN. They consult the United Nations of the world. They advise the United Nations of the world. Now look at this. The Lucius Trust's publishing company was founded in the early 1920s as Lucifer Publishing Company. The Lucius Trust says that the name was probably chosen to honor Lucifer. What on earth does a modern day consultant to the most powerful and progressive force engaged in uniting all nations under one banner, the UN, have to do with the fallen angel of the Holy Bible, the one that Jesus Christ told us would manifest on earth as a world ruler to deceive the whole world into a new world system. Yes, that angel. Why on earth would they honor that angel? Well, that's easy. They were founded by Freemasons. Incorporated into the United States by Alice Bailey and her husband, Foster, well, here's a book written by Foster the Freemason, The Spirit of Freemasonry, published by Lucius Press, also known as Lucifer Publishing. And one last thing. If you dig a little, you'll find an article on their website, The Esoteric Meaning of Lucifer, on a modern company website with consultative powers to the United Nations of all things. Wow, I really hope you're seeing this. In the article, it states that the Baileys had enormous respect for H.P. Blavatsky, who stated in her renowned occult book, The Secret Doctrine, on page 245 in a chapter called Holy Satan. It is Satan who is the God of our planet and the only God. 
Then the article goes on to say that the Baileys sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Everything has been reversed. Evil is good. Jesus is the enemy. And Lucifer sacrificed himself for you, not Jesus Christ. The one who washed the feet of his disciples and the only one they fear. Modern progressive atheists do not influence world events, people. Satanists do. Remember the goal of the Lucius Trust? The fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. Yeah, the divine plan exposed by Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Hence their war on the Bible and the abolition of it from the school system and even from modern Christian churches who dare not preach from the book of Revelation. Your most highly evolved and contemporary leaders of, of society secretly believe that in the theos theosophical perspective, the descent of these solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace, but rather an act of great sacrifice. They believe in the fallen angels and their revolt against God, as revealed in the Bible, led by the devil, the chief commander of Freemason Bob Dylan, remember? These people make contact with these fallen angels, with the royal art of Freemasonry called witchcraft. Please stick around. Let me show you that. How many solar angels does the Bible say followed Lucifer out of this heaven, heavenly realm? A third of the angels makes 33%. Does that number sound familiar yet? 33 degrees of Freemasonry. Just a coincidence. From the Gospels again which expose these people every time. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels and who has access to some visionary world beguile you, trick you of your reward. You still don't believe that the false humility of the charitable fraternity of the Freemasons is behind it all? Well, Blavatsky also published a magazine called Lucifer with a woman named Annie Besant. And here's a letter written by Annie herself with the official Masonic letterhead. And here Annie signs off as a 33rd degree Freemason. Printed also on the left-hand corner, Annie Besant, 33rd degree, and a member of the Supreme Council. Undeniable and undisputable, please don't make me prove it to you over and over. Have you caught a glimpse of who you're dealing with yet? They're all Freemasons, high-ranking, and they're all buffeted by a plethora of Masonic dupes who don't know any of this because they can't decipher the symbols and they don't care to try. They're proud and boastful and defensive of their beloved fraternity in which they get to rub shoulders with the most important people of their suburbs, cities and towns and in which they got on their knees to take blood oaths of death, calling other old decrepitated men worshipful master, yet still they think it's innocent and has nothing to hide. Delusional and lost, almost beyond hope. Some of them still think it's a Christian organization, just like the founder of the, the Satanic Church described. What do you get when you carefully conceal Satanism with Christianity? You get Freemasonry. People, Satanism is at the core of our world, and it is behind the new order that will be implemented soon enough. It will be all done through deception. You'll be tricked. Remember how I told you that the all-seeing eye sees that we're in hell? Well, the massive witch and Freemason, Helena, says so right here. Satan is the minister of God, Lord of the seven mansions of Hades, the angel of the manifest worlds. Hades means hell. Manifest worlds means earth. This is who you're dealing with. This is the religion and the beliefs of the rich, powerful, and famous. And yes, politicians. Do you want to go back to sleep? You can sleep after this? Well, wait till I show you what they're going to do to you. Coming up in this many minutes. For those who simply refuse to believe that Bono or Scott Morrison or Prince can be Luciferians because they all go to church, let me show you another Masonic ritual they do. And this is before Satanism or Luciferianism is revealed to the candidate. 
And then you tell me if Bono or Scott are capable of secretly believing in Lucifer. It all starts here with the Masonic apron. Different kinds signifying different grades. Have you guessed what it's hiding yet? The genitals. Pretty obvious, like everything else they hide once you can see. The genitals are the true working tools of a mason. Freemasonry is foundationally a sex cult, like Satanism, because it all starts with sex, doesn't it? Life itself starts with sex. So the mystical force of the true God of Freemasonry hides in the hidden part of the human body. That's the Holy of Holies, covered by the Masonic apron, the seat of God, the seat of Lucifer. See here with Satanist King Diamond's artwork? The eye is attached to the horn god, but look at where the eye starts, from the waist down. That's where the apron of a mason begins. And the one eye of Freemasonry is also the one eye of the penis, where life generates and springs forth. See the openly hidden secret of the Masonic square and compass now? You're looking at the sex act. That's the female in missionary position, and that's the male mounting her. The sex act. And the eye in the middle, with these emanating rays, is the orgasm and the ejaculation of the penis. See life shooting forth. That's how they see the sun and the earth too. The sun is the visible penis of their true God, shooting forth life continually. The light itself is the mystical sperm of the God of this world. The sun and penis generate life, while the earth and female womb produce life. The letter G, when replacing the I in the middle of the square and compass, stands for generation, sexual generation. The practical aspect of Freemasonry and Satanism's religion is that of a sex cult. You see Rod Stewart telling you he's a Freemason? By displaying the hidden hand of Freemasonry, also known as the master of the second veil, and look at his other hand, taking the Masonic apron's place for covering his penis which is the Holy of Holies, the seat of God for the Mason. And from the Grand Pontiff of Freemasonry, Albert Pike, hence the significancy of the phallus, the penis, or of its inoffensive substitute, the obelisk, straight from the horse's mouth. The erect penis graces us, or should I say disgraces us, with its presence in every country in the world, marking its territory, the Masonic obelisk in our face, everywhere, making its bold statement, yelling, screaming in silence. This is another reason why we're considered the ignorant and stupid masses. Another example of hidden in plain sight. And here's an erect penis on the front page of the female Freemasonry magazine, The Eastern Star. I once stood in front of this obelisk in Sydney and I must have asked 30 people what they thought it was. Not a single one of them knew. To the Freemasons of the higher degrees, the whole universe is in fact one giant and continuous sex act. This is the structure of Freemasonry. You can take this path to the top or this path. And way up here, you have the order of the mystic shrine. The mystic shrine is what's found behind the Masonic apron, because that's where life comes from. That's the mystic shrine. You have to be a 32nd degree Freemason to be asked to join the order of the mystic shrine. And then, once you're inside, you can be invited to join this order, the Royal Order of Jesters. See, Freemasonry is like Russian dolls, and Satanism is at its center. Look at some of the pins and the pell designs for the Order of the Jesters. You can only join them unless you're at least a 32nd degree Freemason. Sex and debauchery. Erections the adoration of the phallus, masturbation, devils, demons, fallen angels, this one here mocking holiness, reference to the anus, and sodomy, anything to mock the Bible. This disgusting one has King Momus sitting on a female's face and hidden in plain sight is the square and the compass for those who have eyes to see. Bestiality, yes indeed. 
this bagpipe player has an erection and the sheep is running away scared. Self-explanatory. This one, this character has an emphasized eye, if you can see that, and the skull has an emphasized eye also. The wink and the one eye of the Indian. And the secrecy, the symbols of secrecy. On the far right here, the monkey covers his groin area, symbolizing the Masonic apron and the black and white dogs. Well, they symbolize the checkered floorboard of the Masonic Lodge, which is sexualized male and female principles. The horned god, where evil and good don't exist. And in the first degree, Masons are given a Bible stamped with a square and compass, oblivious to the inherent mockery and the foundation of the whole fraternity, as alluded to here with a genuine royal order of jester's private lapel. This is a certificate that a jester receives after his initiation, and you see here their patron is named King Momus, and he was a god or a daemon, which is a variant of the word demon, who was expelled from heaven, as the legend goes. Sounds just like Lucifer, because it is. Do Freemasonry disassociate themselves from the tax-exempt branch of Freemasonry known as the Jesters? Well, no, they didn't. Because, I mean, this is rare footage of an event within, within the Lodge. Now, I'm sorry about the quality of this, but this is a Masonic Lodge. So for Masons that want to say that the Jesters are contrary to Masonry, well, look. Look at these dirty old men. Masters of the Lodge with sublime morals, all married, probably all have daughters and granddaughters, yet still this, inside the lodge. But for you it should be obvious, because you can see the square and compass, the sex act, and the all-seeing eye, right in the middle. I told you the Satanism was the oldest religion in the world, and it is. The sex act, was ritualized and organized as a religion before we called it Satanism. But Satan has always been the god, the horny god, the horned god of these sex cults. All of them, from Samaria to Egypt to Greece and so on, that's called, that's called paganism. And the real Bible of the Freemasons and the pagans, the one not written by hand, the one that's older than any book, the one that supersedes all the rest in age, thus making it the purest and most unadulterated word of God in the eyes of the Freemasons, is nature. And nature is their Bible. And before you think there's nothing wrong with that, wait a second, because you're not thinking straight. Ask a Mason whether he be a first degree or a 33rd degree, what is Freemasonry? And the universal go-to answer is this. A peculiar system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Now, why would you need to veil your morals? Because in their peculiar system, evil is good and good is evil. That's Satanism 101. A peculiar system of morals. That should tell you something. That should tell you everything. Why would your morals need to be a secret? Because their deeds are in fact evil. Glorifying the laws of nature where cruelty and self-obsession obsession are virtuous characteristics. That's nature. Nature is as cruel as she is kind. The checkered floorboard where everything is legal. It's Christianity that lives in reverse. The first shall be last. Love your enemies. The meek shall inherit the earth. These are unholy and unnatural concepts in the eyes of visible nature. The nature of Freemasonry, which is Satanism. What the Freemasons really mean by this morality veiled in allegory is that they're allowed to steal because nature allows it. They're allowed to kill because nature allows it. They're allowed to commit adultery because nature isn't monogamous. They're allowed to lie, indulge in all their God-given senses, especially sexual because nature encourages it as long as no one finds out under oath. Jesus said, narrow is the road that leads to life and broad is the road that leads to destruction. The Freemason of the century says, no true Mason can be narrow for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness because broad are the divine 
laws of nature. While they glorify those laws, Christianity breaks those laws. It becomes supernatural because only then can you love your enemy. And so it goes that Christianity is despised by Freemasonry, the real Freemasons, because their Bible is nature. And by nature, they know the personality traits of their God, Satan, because he's the God of this world, just as the Freemasons, the enemies of mankind, say that he is. And just like Jesus said he was too. So they believe that Jesus is evil because he denies human nature and burdens us with the knowledge of sin. Observable nature, that's what guides the Masons' ethics and the Masons' morals. That's why they're called free Masons. Believe you me, because they're free from moral obligations, free from sin, from guilt. They're free from Jesus Christ. These people are introducing this new system of the world, this new age. You're going to miss Christianity when it's gone. Mark my words. Because you have no rights in the eyes of nature, which is the Bible of Freemasonry and Satanism. And soon that will become painfully plain as a fact of life. Now, please, I'll give you a fair warning of what's to come in this presentation. It's very disturbing, or at least it should be. But cause to celebrate follows the disgusting things you're about to see. This is precisely where my own life and well-being come into danger. So let me say this right now. If you hear of my sudden death or of my possession of half a kilogram of cocaine or child porn or my overdose or my suicide, remember this video. And if something so unfortunate should happen to me, May it serve as a catapult to you and as a remembrance of the conclusion to this presentation, which is this many minutes away. Do I really think they're going to make me pay for this video for breaking my oaths? Well, seeing as people are so far gone, lost in the illusion that secret societies have constructed around you and inside you, and seeing as they can simply pull this video down, close my account and whatnot, no, I don't think they'll come after me. But if they do, let me say this to the Grand Lodge that orders my demise right now. Jesus wins. So in saying all that, here we go. Is Scott Morrison a Satanist? I'll let you answer that. Here is a ritual that Scott and every Freemason from this guy to this girl have performed. There is one Masonic apron you'll never see being worn. This one. And when I bumped into it, I thought it was a fake until I found this in Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry, official Masonic literature written for Masons only on this page. What is that head doing there? You'll find out in a sec. Let's read the description of the apron worn in this degree. Speaking of the initiates, it states they wear white aprons sprinkled with blood red and lined and bordered with black. On the flap of the apron, a bloody arm holding a dagger, and on the apron, a bloody arm holding a bloody head by the hair. Now this is why there's an illustration of a decapitated head, and this is going to become to a bone-chilling conclusion. So during this ritual, the candidate removes the blindfold and discovers a basin of water with a tumbler beside it. He's also astonished to find a human head lying on the floor. The master of ceremonies returns and directs the candidate to take up the knife in his right hand and the head in his left. Yes, this pope, this rock star, this pop star, this actor, this actress, and this beloved prime minister, this is what they've done. All of them, hands down. And you thought all you needed to be is talented to succeed? No, you need to belong to the secret society called Freemasonry. And believe me, when you belong to them, you belong to them. Now you tell me, can these people end up believing in Lucifer? Is that really a stretch? Carrying around a bloody head? Swearing to have your brain cooked, tongue torn out from the roots if you ever reveal anything? No, the stretch is that you think they couldn't believe in Lucifer. That's the stretch. Lucifer, the one who sets you free, remember, from sin by sinning. 
Can you now see the bloody spirit of Freemasonry lurking behind the veneer of charity and the veneer of Christianity? Because Scott Morrison goes to church, apparently. The Pope is a Christian, apparently. But look at these people. So-called Christians or Christians gathered around a giant erect phallus in the middle of the Catholic square. This is Freemasonry, the demolition of morals, the creation of hypocrisy and the demolition of true virtue. These minds are directing the future. Now, to be fair, I don't know if these heads are real heads. I never got that far to find out. But I will tell you this. All the skulls they use are, they're real. All the skeletons they use are, they're real. And they run every single noteworthy funeral home in Australia and the world. I know that personally and for a fact. Once again, you are only seeing the tip of the iceberg because I can't bring myself to tell you about what I really know of the rituals that come after the 33rd degree Freemasonry. For as much as they celebrate life in various grotesque ways, they also celebrate death in ritual form. Which are the things I can't speak of to you? They have to celebrate death in order to prove that they can see things through the all-seeing eye. The one that sees above evil and above good. The checkered floorboard where things kill each other to live. Where life is cruel, where morals are broad. There is no sin. There is only nature. See, these Masonic rituals are designed to desensitize the candidate further and further in preparation for the raw truth of Satanism, the truth which is plainly stated by the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry. Lucifer is the light bearer, and that you should doubt it not from their own literature and from their own mouths until finally the candidate's introduction into the royal art of Freemasonry, witchcraft, the ancient craft. Why do you think that witchcraft has disappeared? It never disappeared. It was hidden, forced to go into hiding by the appearance of Jesus on the human scene. Another reason why he's passionately hated and soon, him and his ways will be done away with in this new world. And so will your rights. You still don't believe me? You're still doubting all the evidence, like the Freemasons are counting on you to doubt. Well, remember from the Encyclopedia of American Religions, the continuing impact of speculative modern Freemasonry provided fertile soil in which new magical orders could grow. Watch this two-minute clip. I can vouch for every single thing you hear come from the former Mason's mouths. In the initiation in Freemasonry, we had to be recommended by another Mason. Well, in order to join witchcraft, you have to be first screened. You have to be recommended by somebody currently in witchcraft. Well, when I was initiated, I was blindfolded and bound by a rope and on your bare chest was thrust the point of a spear. In witchcraft, we were initiated through a, uh, a very involved ritual, uh, initiation ceremony, uh, wherein the uh, candidate was led uh, blindfolded, uh, bound by a rope uh, to the edge of uh, the uh, magic circle. And the rope is around your neck and your lid forward. And up front, and the eastern end of the building is a person who's a worshipful master. And you kneel down before him as if he were a god. You were met uh, by the uh, high priest or high priestess uh, at that time, usually with a sword uh, to your chest. When I went to enter the lodge, a sharp object was put to my left breast. And I was warned that should I reveal any of the secrets of Freemasonry, uh, to know what to expect. When you're presented before the high priest, a sword is held against your chest and you actually take a blood oath, promising to remain faithful to the secrets of witchcraft. Well, when you are in the room, this um, blindfold is taken away from you, and this is a time when they 
say that you're coming from darkness into light. During the initiation ceremony, the, the initiate is led by the lieutenant of the uh, high priest and is challenged at the edge of the circle by someone saying, who goes there? And the answer is, one from the world of darkness. In masonry, the prayers are ended with so mote be. Oh, and one of the other aspects of, uh, or distinctives of the craft was that we would always end any spell or ritual where we released the powers, where the power was released, with the word so mote it be. By now, this should sound like a stupid question, but why do you think that the initiation ceremonies into witchcraft are almost identical to that of Freemasonry? I'm not even going to answer that. Come on, people, wake up with me. Here's Colin Minogue, a Freemason, okay? Hidden hand of Freemasonry and the one eye symbolism of the God of her religion. Now, here she is giving the vow of silence, but what the masses fail to see is what's written on the book she's holding. Witchcraft. The Royal Art of Freemasonry. This is what her vow of silence is referring to in the picture. Yes, Kylie Minogue is a witch. And if you're still that deluded by the magic wand that is television, entertainment, movies, media and whatnot, then you'll no doubt fail to use the incredible eyes that God gave you from which to see the real world with, the evil world, where Satanists are at the helm. The ban on witchcraft was only officially lifted in England in the 50s, after more than 1,500 years. So that tells you who's in control now. And when I give you a glimpse into witchcraft in a minute, you'll see why it's evil and why it should be anything but legal, even when using it for, for so-called good, because the well they draw from is poisoned. But thanks to propaganda, the craft of the witch has been absorbed into the realm of fantasy. Justin Timberlake here is also referring to magic in this cover art, with the all-seeing eye looking through the number of their god. Magic. Magic is a much smoother and more acceptable word than witchcraft, that other word. That word still retains its ferociousness, its true character. But that word has been sterilized. That word isn't real to you anymore. You can't feel it for what it really is. Or if you do, your mind has isolated it, confined it to some small groups of unimportance scattered here and there over this diverse world. And so it's nothing to be feared or concerned about. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. Now, some witches want to say that witchcraft isn't Satanism. That's either more delusion or misdirection as confirmed here by Anton LaVey in the Companion to the Satanic Bible when speaking of the followers of the Witchcraft Not Satanism School. He writes very accurately that they cannot afford to admit to an affinity with anything that bears the name Satan. He knows where the power of witchcraft comes from. Now, does that mean that Justin Timberlake is a Satanist because of his symbolism and the use of his word alluding to witchcraft in his artwork? Well, yes, actually, that's correct. He is. Here's a quote from, his, one, of his, from one of his songs. You want to see who else is in good company with these famous idols? Suzanne Atkins. Same sign, same religion, Satanism. Do they all have to admit it in the English language for you to believe me? Or can the symbols they use finally be enough for you? Look at what another legendary Freemason, Arthur E. Waite, states. Out of evil comes good. And the confusion of tongues gave rise to the ancient practice of Masons conversing without the use of speech. Out of evil comes good. So it's good to do evil. That's what he's saying. See, I'm trying to include you into the conversation that the Freemasons are having with each other in public via symbolism unbeknownst to you. Listen to what famous U.S. footballer Tom Brady said regarding his wife. So, man, I listen to her. And right after the game, she said, see, I did a lot of work. You do your work, I do mine. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. Well, this is Tom Brady. And this is his wife. Both initiated into the secret society. Of course they are. 
Wait, she's not displaying the one eye symbol of the Freemasons, is she? Uh, that's just art, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. She's a witch, and her husband just told you she was. Here's Steve Miller's front cover to the famous song Abracadabra, and he covers his eye because he's a member of the one-eyed religion, and abracadabra is a legitimate word used in witchcraft. Here it is in the 100-year-old Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Why would the word abracadabra be in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the fraternity that runs charities, hospitals, nursing homes, and that secretly supply us with popes, presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens, and the bulk of our entertainers? Why? You know, I really think it's time to show you what the Satanists dressed as Freemasons are going to do to you and the world to finally establish their new world, their utopia. And this is going to be the segue into that. This is my last practical example of Freemasonry's satanic roots. And then I'll close this presentation with the most shocking thing you'll see or hear. You probably won't care, but to the precious few who remain, I will send you off with the greatest and most beautiful shock of all. This is Jay-Z inside his Masonic Lodge. You can see the Masons in aprons in front of him. This is where Jay-Z takes his sick oaths of silence, kneels down in front of other men and calls them Most Worshipful Master, an appalling title to give to a man on this planet. Jay-Z the Freemason writes songs like this. This one's called Lucifer. And in Empire State of Mind he writes, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. Oh, but he, he can save you, Jay-Z. He can even wake you up just before you collide into a concrete wall doing 120 kilometers an hour. I should know. This is fellow member of the craft Alicia Keys who sings on the track. Here she is, showing her allegiance and wearing the broken and bloody cross of Jesus Christ. The occult peace sign, pure hatred for Jesus. There is peace when your conscience has been killed, seed to sin, and you can indulge to anything. A false and temporary kind of peace, no doubt. Here's a shirt of Jay-Z's clothing line, purely Masonic, The Craft. Well, this is The Craft he's referring to. This is him with well-known witch, Marina Abramovich, also showing her sign of allegiance to Freemasonry. Now, here we go. Here's Jay-Z wearing a most revealing top and the dead giveaway that you need to see behind the curtain of Freemasonry. Do what thou wilt. Do whatever you want. That's the adopted motto of the most notorious Satanist of the 20th century, 33rd degree Freemason, Alistair Crowley. Here is his certificate of appointment, known as the 33rd degree inscription and the double-headed eagle of Freemasonry. And here, next to his name on the certificate, including the symbol for a grand commander of Freemasonry, as shown in their encyclopedia. But to really confirm that he's a Freemason, here he is doing the Masonic sign of the Master of the Second Veil. Now here's a legitimate letter from, from Alistair. Again, the addition of his uh, inscription of the 33rd degree, and he signs off with a symbol of the past, Commander of Freemasonry. What does he write beside it? Baphomet. This Baphomet. Now listen to this man to get a clearer picture of the truth behind the secret religion of the stars and the leaders of the world. Alistair is the founder of a Luciferian church called the Ordo Templi Orientis, and he named himself the Beast 666, straight from the Bible, depicting the number of wickedness in human form. In his what's called Liberis writings, he says, with my hawk's head, I peck at the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross. Do you see the hatred? You think they don't hate you too? Keep watching. And from the equinox, with the all-seeing eye of Freemasonry, this illustration. What does it mean? The writer himself explains. The picture is symbolic of the new eon, the new age. From the blasted stump of dogma hangs the hag with dyed and bloody hair. Christianity. 
there's a massive glimpse into the new world order that's coming. Keep watching. And down here, do what thou wilt is the true nature. The true nature, remember? The broad morals. There is no such thing as evil. So do what you want. Can you see the Masonic future yet? Can you see the hidden hatred that pulses through its veins? If they believe in do what thou wilt, what do you think they will do to you? And what do you think they'll do in order to build this new world? This is from a commentary on his book of the law. The beast 666 adviseth that all children should be accustomed from infancy to witness every type of sexual act. Do what thou wilt. And what about the royal art of Freemasonry? Magic is the highest, most absolute, and most divine knowledge of natural philosophy. What a statement. The highest, most absolute and divine. Well, let's have a closer look into some of the more hidden secrets of the most divine natural philosophy known as magic. Any living being is a storehouse of energy, varying in quantity according to the size and health of the animal. At the death of the animal, this energy is liberated suddenly. The animal, therefore, should be killed within the circle, within the magic circle, so that energy that's released can be captured and directed to serve the will of the witch, male or female. This is a science, a hidden science. But now hear this, coming from a 33rd degree Freemason, and don't you forget that. For the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force, a male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most suitable sacrifice. Can you see? This is who Jay-Z is quoting on his top. This is who this Jonas brother holds in high esteem. This is who the Beatles have on their front cover as a figure they admire. No worse, they put at the top. This is the same picture of the front cover in a mirrored form and after some kaleidoscoping, you'll find this. Fellow Freemason Alistair Crowley sits at the top and down the bottom there even appears the phallus with the testicles and up here the vesica pisces, also known as the vagina. Does, does this picture make more sense now? All Freemasons, yes indeed. And by the way, that's where Jay-Z got his symbol from, from Satanism, as portrayed here by Satanist and Freemason Alistair Crowley and by Satanic Church founder Anton LaVey. Does anyone still think that Freemasonry isn't Satanism in disguise? Let's finally take a peek into the Royal Art of Freemasonry. And this is the briefest way I can show you from the complete book of magic and witchcraft. This is a practitioner's manual, not from some bogus author trying to expose witchcraft. Just so you can get it through your head that this is real and this is protected. The writer or compiler of this God-forsaken book warns the reader that the recipes may seem disgusting, that the knowledge revealed has been forbidden and has caused suffering and death to witches and the victims of witches. You don't think witch witchcraft was a serious menace in times past and present? Come with me and I'll show you how bad this menace actually gets as the world's most powerful and secret religion moves ever closer to fulfilling its biblical destiny and it will. Close your eyes or not, it will fulfill its destiny. Firstly, let's connect this sick art straight to modern Freemasonry with the word abracadabra. Both written in triangular form from the Manual of Witchcraft and from the Encyclopedia of the Secret Society that your Prime Minister belongs to. And just like high-ranking Freemasons, male and female witches also drink out of a human skull. But here the practitioner drinks wine in which they first dissolve or boil the brains or heart of an animal before consuming it all from the human skull. In this ritual, the initiate is instructed to drink in the night at spring water out of a skull of one that hath been slain. That's right, out of a, the skull of a human who's been murdered or sacrificed. Otherwise, eat a pig with a knife that slew a man. Please don't turn away. Look straight ahead and open your eyes to the planet you are on. Because the real monster under your bed doesn't actually go away when you close your eyes. 
In other rituals of the craft, you burn a rooster while he's alive. With the use of a, of a poisonous plant used in ointments and potions of witches, you can assure death and destruction on a victim. You want to make a female enemy sterile or a male enemy impotent for the rest of his life? Otherwise, you can just kill them. The hand of glory is the severed hand that is dried and preserved to be used in black magic. Yes, a dead human hand. A black circle is most effective for operations of evil. The use of blood and sex in ritual was considered helpful for obtaining the necessary energy to successfully work magic or achieve mystical insight. But here's where the darkness thickens even further. Animals such as black cats or children may be sacrificed and participants may drink the blood of the sacrifice. And just so you know that Stanley Kubrick wasn't joking, an orgy of participants sometimes follows the mass. No remorse, just science, the science of witchcraft, the royal art. And here, what's necessary for the working is the fat of young children, dead children. How many children do you think go missing in Australia every year? That's how many. And what about the world? Is it one million? Well, according to the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children, it's eight million children per year. Do you think that the highest, most absolute and most divine knowledge of natural philosophy has anything to do with that? Any chance of an international secret system that is bolstered by initiations and degrees and bound under the most brutal penalties that the human mind can ever devise? Do you think that has any involvement? Any chance of that? Am I saying that this Freemason has sacrificed children? No, I never said that. But did he ever even remotely mention the secret societies? Did he ever try to warn you? Educate you? No, he was under oath. Am I saying that these Freemasons have sacrificed children? No, I never said that either. But have they ever warned you about the secret society that believes that Lucifer is the saviour? The, the society functioning right under your nose, that secret society? No, not a chance. Julia Gillard admitted she belonged to one, but that's about it because they're all under oath. So where does this ancient craft originate from? It originates from the spirit realm, from spirit beings. That's who taught mankind the royal art before civilization began. In this chapter, The Rites of Satanism and Witchcraft, the manual explains that a typical satanic Sabbath was, number one, a homage to the devil, usually performed as the osculum infamy, also known as the kiss of shame, which is so shameful that we'll just put it this way. The ritual involves kissing the hindquarters of the devil, the rear. Surely this is far removed from anything to do with Freemasonry. People, the original order of the Knights Templar were found guilty of this very same obscene ritual. And where do you find the modern variant of the Knights Templars of today? I told you, in the highest degree of Freemasonry, right here. Here's a couple of them now. And what's on this Templar's head? From the Masonic Encyclopedia, remember? A symbol of the Baphomet, according to 33rd degree Alistair Crowley. And we can confirm that in the Satanic Bible. That's exactly what's hiding deep inside of Freemasonry. I'm only showing you this to show you the reality of Satanism and the demonic realm, the world you can't see. On this earth, <laughs> and in this earth, and in, uh, and in the world we can't see. Look here. The hierarchy of demons occupies a more important place in both black and white magic rituals. Both black and white. This is where the power of witchcraft comes from. And this is the reason these bizarre rituals actually function and actually work. Because after the ritual is performed on Earth, its effects are carried out to their conclusion in the spirit realm by spiritual beings or demons, actual demons. The reality that is hidden from you. Because if you found out that Satan was real, then that would have to make Jesus Christ real too. And he is the one they hate. And if Jesus Christ is real, that changes everything. 
And this is how much they hate him. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples is performed backwards. The high priest is sometimes naked. A prostitute assists him, and a naked virgin, who may later be deflowered, is the altar. Everything that is sacred is defiled, and everything that is filthy is on it as pure. Because of their burning hatred of Jesus Christ, just as he's hated by the fallen angels that they worship, it gets worse when you hear what they use as a substitute for the bread that Jesus broke and told his disciples to eat in remembrance of him. A wafer which initiates me with this, this, and this. Or the name of Satan may be written upon it. And this isn't even witchcraft. This is just a ceremony announcing who they love and who they hate. So is Satan real? It continues to state in the hierarchy of demons at the very top, Satanakia, whose title is the Commander-in-Chief. What did Bob Dylan, the Freemason, call the one he made a bargain with? Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. Same title, Commander-in-Chief, Chief Commander. Are you following? But watch this. In case the darkness is getting a little too thick and encompassing for you, let's shine a little light. The true light that only the Gospels can supply. Speaking to us humans and revealing something about Satan, the Gospels state, you follow the spirit of the age in this world system as dominated by the commander of the spiritual powers of the air. Satan, the god of this world, the commander. You still think the Gospels are wrong or fake? See, Satanists know that the spirits also live in the air, just as the Gospels reveal. You can summon any of these demonic spirits by name if you possess the royal art. Who do you think this figure on the front cover represents? A magician who is inadequately prepared and cannot attain his desires may seek the aid of Satan. That's who this is. Now that you know, hopefully for a fact, that these are at the top of the human food chain, do you think they'd be fooling around with stupid fairy tales? No. Witchcraft and Satanism is absolutely real, hence their earthly power. This demon here, fifth in the pyramid structure, holds the title of Inspector General. And what's the title of the highest degree in Freemasonry, who exists in every local lodge in every suburb, a suburb near you? Inspector General. Same title as the living demon. Do you believe me now? You can even conjure Lucifer himself, or be Beelzebub, who the Gospels call the Prince of the Devils, both of whom are listed as superior spirits in this book of witchcraft and magic. I can show you so much more from this disgusting book, but I'll cut it off here with the Seal of Saturn, a demonic sigil from the complete book of magic and witchcraft. And this is his seal. Can you see... Do you see? This is the society that lives amongst you, above you. The one eye religion of Freemasonry hidden right in front of those who have their eyes wide shut. I'm going to now show you what that world that they are building from the ashes of the one you're currently living in looks like. But lastly, to drive this business of blood sacrifice home, here's American rapper Azealia Banks with the triple six hand sign and now over the all-seeing eye, the all-seeing eye in her video, the eye in the triangle of the Freemasons on her shirt, and the devil's horns, her liberator, her master, her commander, and now displaying the secret society vow of silence. Along with that, the last brief glimpse into the highly concealed royal art of Freemasonry. Smell of crap that's about to come off my floor right now, guys. Oh my God. Three years worth of brujeria. Yes, you know I gotta scrape all this shit up. And what does brujeria mean? You know what it means. Witchcraft. Azealia Banks, the witch, with her eye in the triangle shirt, and the logo of, for example, the Grand Lodge of Freemasonry in Spain. 
one and the same symbol. The logo of the Fraternity of the Freemasons and the logo of this Church of Lucifer. The one eye. One and the same symbol. Freemasonry has deceived you. Yes, people, now you know how Satanism has functioned out of sight and out of mind. You still think there's no such thing as witchcraft? Or that it only existed in the olden days? You still think that blood isn't a part of the royal art? You still think that local Masonic lodges of the world are not filtering systems for Satanists and a cloak for organized Satanism with a grand master plan for the world? You think there's nothing to the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Uh, after seeing all this and the Azealia Banks clip, and after realizing that there exists a hidden and guarded science of the art of blood sacrifice, you think there was no science behind Jesus' crucifixion, a deeper reality that we can't see or understand? You think Jesus didn't know what he was doing? Or are you one of those who still think he didn't exist? Tell me, how can they hate something that doesn't exist? If only you could hear from some other Freemasons who have the courage to break their oaths. But you won't. You won't. This is probably it. But I once heard from a Freemason, an honest one, in about 2016, after I posted this picture on Facebook. He knew. He knew the truth. Just like you do now, or just like you should. And he wrote to me. And he said, by the time we are done, every church will be a brothel. Well, in case you think that that's impossible, this is a fashion show that was held in a church, a real church, and it was organized by high-ranking Freemasons, who you will see now to be Satanists. Designed to be a heart-wrenching mockery and a colossal sign of the times, this event. Just so you know, it's a Masonic production. Here's the inside of a lodge. See those twin pillars? Well, here they are. See the Masonic checkered floorboard? Well, there it is. See the Masonic square and compass? Well, there it is. And do you see the eye of Freemasonry? Yeah, there they are. The lower square in the square and compass has been disfigured so that... as to not make it too obvious. But now that we've established that, here is the spirit of Freemasonry. As displayed through just a few of the models, this one wears the horns of the Baphomet, the horns of Satan, with his all-seeing eye in the background, more horns. This model wears the all-seeing eye, as does this one. And this disgusting thing with another huge all-seeing eye of Lucifer in the background. Then there's this with a satanic pentagram on her face. And finally, this male model in a skirt with two satanic inverted crosses of Jesus Christ on his top in a church. Oh, the morbid victory of the Freemasons. Unstoppable. For now. When people like Lady Gaga cover one eye while wearing an inverted cross, and you don't see the connection of the one-eye symbolism to Satanism, then your observational skills have been compromised. In the span of two days, I saw these ads in my local shopping center. And that alone tells me that the satanic age is here, manifesting all around us, seemingly invisible, while you look straight ahead through the symbols. Just like the initiation process of the secret societies themselves, society at large must be incrementally introduced and seduced into further depravity and self-love. And haven't we been slowly but surely perverted over time, degree by degree, until we think that men dressing as women is beautiful and healthy, anal sex is a form of expressing love, the sick world of pornography is considered as liberating for women and men and protected by free speech. In California, babies are allowed to be aborted after birth because it's a woman's choice, and that's not considered murder. 
a world where we should applaud young children like Desmond is amazing, cross-dressing while he dances for gay men at a gay bar on a podium because he's paving the way for the kids of the future. And we should get shamed, fined and even jailed if we point out that this is sick, sinful and dare call it evil, which is what it is. What spirit is behind Desmond is amazing? Oh yeah, an evil spirit, no doubt about it. You think Freemasonry and their peculiar morals aren't behind the decline of Christian morality and morality worldwide? It's all by design. The Masonic war on Jesus and the Christian social structure, generally undetected by human perceptions, and still people will write to me and comment on how absurd what I've said is. A cloud over the eyes of their heart. Well, I'll tell you this. There is no bigger axe that has ever been grinded than the one Freemasonry grinds. Because the appearance of Jesus Christ pretty much destroyed their religion, drove it underground, and they will have their revenge. Soon you're going to see it. We've all been initiated into the lowest levels of materialistic Satanism under the banner of secular humanism. I know blokes who think that life's great, mate. Life's terrific. Life's what you make it. Evil, Lucifer, Satan, these are just words that Christians invented to help them sleep better at night. There are no cults. There are no conspiracies. John F. Kennedy's speech about secret societies plotting against the world, that's not relevant anymore. That's history. There's no such thing as Satanism amongst civilized people. Oh, children, when darkness comes to your door, takes your wife, takes your health, your job, your home, your freedom, your children, then you call out, Oh, my God, my God, this is evil. Why is this happening to me? Well, here comes the darkness. Here comes the evil. You want to know what the new world order looks like? You want to know what the future holds? You want to know what horror is coming to our planet? As Jesus told us, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Masonic New World Order. These are the mysterious Georgia Guidestones, also known as the American Stonehenge. They are a set of granite monoliths which were constructed in 1980 and funded by an unknown and anonymous group and commissioned by a man using the pseudonym R.C. Christian. On a ledger beside the monument is written, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Here we have a reference to a new age. With this, we get a clue as to the spirit behind the structure. The Age of Reason happens to be the title of a book by Thomas Paine. Now, you can colour him any which way you want to, but whichever way, one glaring colour shines through. Thomas was a hater of Christianity. That's the second clue to the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones. The third is the fact that the Guidestones feature as what could be seen as a replacement to the Ten Commandments of the Christian God with the new Ten Commandments of the New Age because I will not steal, cheat, lie, kill and so on. They're just, well, too narrow for the New Age, for the Age of Reason. Clearly designed to be a take on the Biblical Commandments being 10 in number. They are all very vague, very vague indeed. But anyone can ascertain the horror that must first take place before this new age can begin by looking at the first commandment, sorry, guideline. Because this one's not vague at all. Maintain humanity at under 500 million. That's right, a reduction of at least 7 billion human beings would be necessary for that. This thing cost the equivalent of half a million US dollars to build and the street it's located on is named after it so that tells you how much reach its creators had. Its presence alone is a disgrace and a declaration of execution to most living people alive today. But let's go on to the fourth clue as to the spirit behind these monuments. 
the monuments outlining the age of reason. The name R.C. Christian, the so-called person who commissioned the building of these giant slabs, anyone who's versed in secret societies or is a high-ranking ranking member themselves would instantly recognize the pseudonym as a reference to the secret society known as the Rosicrucians, which is just another secret society branch that exists under the umbrella of Freemasonry, which is an extension of all secret societies of the past and is now the mother of all of them. In this Masonic website, Worshipful Master Wynne Westcott urges the Freemasons to consider their status as Rosicrucians. The RC stands for Rosenkrauts, Christian Rosenkrauts, is the mythical founder of the Rosicrucian order. And as impossible as it is for me to prove that Thomas Paine himself, the writer of Age of Reason, was a Freemason, he did also write this book, The Origin of Freemasonry. That is the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones, the satanic spirit, and a straight off the bat view of this approaching new age. I told you, the whole system is about to change, and it's not going into the future, it's actually going back into the past. The old religion, that's what's taking everything over. And you'll walk straight into it, blind as a bat, thinking these people want to help you. They will appear as your saviors, forgetting or never being told in the first place that all this time there have been two societies in the world, the visible one, which is the one we're in, and the invisible one. Remember that the invisible one considers you profane, vile, and vulgar. Why on earth would they want to keep you around? In a book I can't mention written by them, people are referred to as useless eaters. We've become excess inventory, redundant, and past our use-by date in their eyes. Think about this. According to a prediction by information technology and research advisory firm Gartner, one third of jobs will be replaced by software, robots and smart machines by 2025. That's four years away. Google engineering director Ray Kurzweil anticipates that robots will have reached human level intelligence by 2029. And by 2050, 80% of all jobs will be eliminated by automation. What on earth are you and your family good for then? What do you think the secret society will do to the vile multitude then? The utopia is coming, but it ain't your utopia. You still think that by the measure of the minds of international Satanism, you should be kept around? This excess baggage that the bulk of society has become? No, no, no. The new age is dawning. And generally speaking, you're not invited. It'll just look like you are. Remember that Charles Darwin, the Freemason, is listed as an influential figure in the Satanic Church. So mass murder and mass death are natural and necessary themes in the name of evolution. An artificially induced evolution into this. Here's the same image in real life in Eilat, Israel. Seemingly unrelated to the seal on the US dollar bill, right? but standing in glory with a Masonic squaring compass, telling you exactly who owns this pyramidal symbol, complete with the one eye on top. Same symbol, same designers, worshipping the same God. You should be getting goosebumps by now. Is this a conspiracy led by international Freemasonry? Oh, you don't have to bet your life on it, because your life has already been placed as a bet on your behalf and without your knowledge but with your permission, because all of the information is hidden in plain sight. In your face is where it's hidden. You're going to lose this battle unless you've been hidden in Jesus Christ, the only one who warned you that the new age is a trap and that it is the climax to this epic drama being played out on planet Earth. Now hang on, brace yourself, because I ain't going to let you down. This is a magazine called The New Age, but if you press rewind, you can find its source. Supreme Council of 33 Degree Freemasonry. This one stretches way back to 1922. 
See the twin pillars of Freemasonry? Look, this is 19th century Freemason and New Age pioneer Helena Blavatsky on the cover of this edition. She's the one who wrote that darkness is absolute light and that Satan is the god of our planet and that we are in hell. But do you think the readers of these magazines are told that? No. Darkness is sold as light. Satan is disguised and it's him in the details. This Masonic New Age magazine was the precursor to all magazines and trends, promoting the great deception of self-love and spirituality. Meanwhile, you're feeding off the plate that Luciferians serve you. Look at how the Satanic Bible in 1966 reveals the reality behind the curtain. Evidence of a new Satanic Age. A new age. The new Satanic Age. All rigged and all propelled by Freemasonry. Satanism's magic cloak. After all, and I think you should have guessed by now, that Anton Zandor LaVey, the founder of the Satanic Church, the one who vowed to help destroy Christianity, is himself a Freemason. I can't prove it to you, but I know it. Because of not only his obvious fondness of the fraternity of the Freemasons and the mention of it in his Satanic Bible, and its vital role in the Satanic Takeover, but also because of the symbols, specifically this one, generally called the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. Freemason James de Rothschild displaying the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. X Factors L.A. LA Reid showing the Devil's Horns next to fellow Freemason Avril Lavigne. The Secret Society sign for the Devil's Number and displaying the Devil's Claw over and over. The better example is with New Age guru Annie Besant co-writer of Lucifer magazine and 33rd degree Freemason, also showing the lion's paw here and here. But the best example I have is with Aerosmith, guitarist Joe Perry clearly displaying the sign of the master of the second veil of the Freemasons, and right next to him, Stephen Tyler, doing the lion's paw. Clearly both Freemasons, secretly showing their allegiance with symbols, and here's Anton LaVey displaying the same Masonic symbol. Yes, a Freemason founded the Satanic Church. Now that we know who's really behind the so-called New Age, listen to some of the confessions of the New Ages in their literature. Once you scrape past all the talk of spirituality and love and rainbows. New Age author, feminist and hater of Christianity, Barbara G. Walker writes in The Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets. A triple six. 666 was the magic number of the triple Aphrodite. She further compliments the number when she calls it the miraculous number 666. Speaking of the new age to come, PhD Christopher Hyatt writes in Undoing Yourself, as we moved closer and closer to the well-planned for and long-awaited invocation of the Prime Minister unto the very King of Hell, the Grand Vicar of Lord Lucifer. Yes, the very well planned for, and very long awaited indeed. Do you see what's coming? Mr. Hyde also enlightens us in the fact that opposites do not exist apart from the mind. Evil and good are all in your head. That's why you should brace yourself, because these are the minds creating the new world system. He confirms this. The new age will require new men, men of high consciousness and fortitude. All of our present dogma models will crumble. He means the Christian and the Christian social structure will crumble. In the introduction to the book, another PhD, Robert Anton Wilson, tells you what the New Age really thinks of the Christian social structure, which you have more or less enjoyed your whole life, Christian or not. Christianity and democracy have been among the worst disasters to ever befall the human race. I told you atheists, you're going to miss Christianity when it's gone. Here's a picture of Robert with the Masonic eye in the triangle on the wall behind him. Remember where the term New Age came from. So once again, do you think that the new system, the New Age, is going to be democratic? A system that respects you or gives a damn about what you think once it's in place? Let me answer it this way. Christopher Hyatt quotes from one of his literary heroes and famed philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, who said... What is more harmful than any vice? 
active sympathy for the ill-constituted and weak Christianity. So to be a Christian and to actively have sympathy for the weak, that's the worst vice. That's backward and evil. So the answer is no. This is what I'm warning you about. And look, Frederick's work has exerted a profound influence on modern history. That's from Wikipedia. You know what else Frederick said? You probably won't find this on Wikipedia. The domestic animal, the herd animal, the sick animal man. That's the Christian. And what book of Frederick Nietzsche were these quotes pulled from? The Antichrist. Nietzsche also wrote, Beyond Good and Evil. That's how the all-seeing eye sees things, remember? So does Christopher Hyatt mention mass murder and depopulation in his book? Sure, here you go. Those who would survive can do so only by grasping the vision of what lies ahead. The new wave that will carry them into an interesting future. Yeah, where the vicar of Lucifer is God and Prime Minister. He openly admits the identity of this man. This Antichrist that most of you still think is a fairy tale figure from a fairy tale book. Jesus calls him the man of sin whose number is 666. The actual Antichrist, beloved of the secret societies. Yes, people, the New Age is satanic, actually and literally. On the front cover of this book, in which Christopher was co writer, you can clearly see the eye in the triangle of the Freemasons above the Baphomet. Christopher admits in another book that both satanic cults and Christian fundamentalists are closer to seeing the truth than most normal people. Yes, indeed, how true that is. In Coming World Changes, Harriet and Homer Curtis speak of a prophecy they received from a mysterious spirit titled King of the World. Now, I wonder who that could be. Think not that any country in this broad world can escape. And they also speak of the long-expected great teacher, the king of the new one-world government. The victors will remain as the seed of the new race to people the new land for the new sixth great race. This is the race that Luciferian Lady Gaga referred to. All part of the plan. In Threshold to Tomorrow, New Age author Ruth Montgomery writes on page 206 that only those open to the reality of one world will be around to enjoy it. Sounds like another vague suggestion for mass murder. Vera Elder Stanley's book title implies much the same thing. Initiation of the world. That's right. It's coming. You think Vera hasn't been initiated into the secret one-eyed religion? What else has she authored? How about the finding of the third eye, the all-seeing eye? New Age author John Randolph Price writes in The Planetary Commission, in question and answer form, how do you define the Antichrist? The answer is pretty amazing. Any individual or group who denies the divinity of man as exemplified by Jesus Christ, the highest self of each individual which Jesus Christ never exemplified because he is God. If you deny that me, men and women are divine gods, you are unfit for the glorious New Age Kingdom. And you are the definition of Antichrist. In Practical Spirituality, he prepares his readers for a population drop of 2.5 billion people before the New Age era can begin. On page 32 of New Age author Barbara Marks Hubbard's book, Happy Birthday Planet Earth, she states that people will either change or die. That's the choice, she says. Notice the New Age has a new gospel, yet all the while the world will be neglected of the information in the real gospels, where it warns and predicts. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus, not the Jesus whom we preached, or another gospel, you are most beautifully tolerant of them. In the Book of Knowledge, the Keys of Enoch, the writer has a quote-unquote direct experience with two spirits, Enoch and Metatron, and they share with the writer spiritually scientific teachings regarding the new system of things soon to be fully manifest. The reason this work is considered extra special amongst its readers is because it was the first book to point out the alignment between the Great Pyramid and the constellation of Orion. The first book ever. 
that's basically proof that these spirits, Enoch and Metatron, are the real deal. Not only that, it was also the first book to show the direct relationship between DNA coding and the divine name. That's pretty serious, and the atheists should be really waking up by now, because this is the world's most powerful and secret religion we're talking about, nothing less. The writer was told that those who govern the earth are those who have fallen from the heavens. He calls them the masters, and even states that they were punished with penalties that were assigned to each. These are the fallen angels of the Bible people. These are the masters of the Masonic New Age, as proven here in one of the illustrations from the book, same symbology. This worldwide catastrophe that is coming will bring about a complete reorganization of Earth's life system. And like all high-grade initiates of the, of the secret societies, every attempt is made to bring positivity to the number of the Vicar of Lucifer. I was given instruction to use the specific light harmonics 666, 999, and 12, 12, 12. The spirits further inform the writer of the Keys of Enoch that the pattern 666 is used to identify you with, the, with respect to the Earth's vibration. The number of the beast of the Book of Revelation of Jesus Christ is not only being glorified, it's manifesting in the world. And from another illustration from the book, once again, the same image we see being used over and over with the eye on top of the pyramid. This is the secret religion that encompasses us and has been influencing us for decades upon decades. Two to three centuries, in fact. Just like the Gospels explain, this is an absolute counterfeit of the truth. Christ is mentioned everywhere, but not Jesus Christ. No, this is the Antichrist spirit who will eventually manifest and appear to the world as one man doesn't sound so mythical anymore when you see that the enemies of Jesus Christ and those behind the new world system, they use biblical terms. And Christ, to depict the antithesis, the anti of the real Christ, their saviour. And these spirits from the world we can't see are the ones who taught mankind the sick art of witchcraft. Look at who supplies this book online, sacredmagic.com. You know what magic really is and what it really entails now. So once again, you can see the connection, the relationship. If you still think that this phrase, New World Order, is a conspiracy theory, you're suffering from a medical condition. On the Lucius Trust website, the consultants to the European Union, you find the statement that the New World servers are occupied with the task of inaugurating the New World Order. In the same article, this shocking admission is made. Two-thirds of humanity will stand upon the path at the close of this age, and with that, one-third will die, or to put it surreptitiously, will be held over for later unfoldment. That's the Lucius Trust. The word Lucius being the replacement for the word Lucifer, who works hand-in-hand -hand with the EU, the European Union, stating that two and a half billion human beings are planned to be killed off, all predicted by Jesus, and only Jesus. And if you still think I'm joking or misleading you about what these people are and what they plan to do, here's a book written by the founder of the Lucius Trust, the Freemason Alice Bailey, Education in the New Age, where she, well, educates you about mass population reduction. When a form proves inadequate or too diseased or too crippled for the expression of that purpose, it is, from the point of view of the hierarchy, no disaster when that form has to go. Death is not a disaster to be feared. The work of the destroyer is not really cruel or undesirable. Do you see? Did you hear that? Through the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, the destroyer, for the purpose of the new world, death and mass murder isn't evil, it's good. And Alice Bailey in The Labors of Hercules also tries to re-educate us and protect that God-forsaken number predicted in the Gospels to be associated with evil. The number of the physical plane activity is called the number of the beast. This idea seems to have a horrible fascination with many, but what it really means is that Virgo is the symbol of triplicity, six on the physical plane, six on the emotional plane, and six on the mental plane, 
not 666 at all. And one more time, from the consultants to the European Union, from their website, Lucius Trust, to prove to you that these people are all working toward and waiting for the world leader. The coming of the avatar and the advent of the coming one are the keynotes of the prevalent expectancy. After everything I've shown you, are you going to ignore this? Or worse, are you going to trust these people? Of whom were predicted to this very condemnation 2,000 years ago? right down to a one world system, depopulation, and to the man who will carry the number 666, and with it, implement a new system in which you won't be able to buy or sell unless you receive a mark in your hand or forehead. And what's just been announced by Business Insider? Cashless society. Due to this, by 2024. This is the manufactured trend for the world. And you better believe it's fulfilling biblical prophecy. You know that book that's been ripped out of schools and hysterically discredited? Why do you think there's a single eye displayed on all the covers of George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984? It's because the one eye religion is the one in permanent control, where democracy and Christianity have been utterly extinguished and the remaining population live in a whole new level of permanent communism. It is well known that George Orwell himself had ties with, with the Fabian Society, which is a secret society complete with degrees of initiation. Tucked away neatly somewhere under the wing of Freemasonry, the Fabian Society's logo used to be this, a wolf in sheep's clothing, which is exactly what Freemasonry is. And it was a metaphor for gradually advancing socialism. And socialism is communism for slow learners. This level of denial on our part has been brought on by mass propaganda because everything has been weaponized to work against you and God's truth. Education, entertainment and economics. You're a slave to each one. And Freemasonry is the slave master. Listen to the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry tell you about it in Morals and Dogma. The blind force of the people is a force that must be economized and also managed as the blind force of steam. You are just blind energy to them, made to be enslaved. This force must have a brain. Who do you think the brain is? Freemasonry is the brain, obviously. And he's saying that we're just the body parts that move to its will. Look, these are some pictures I took of the local obelisk in my town, an erect phallus hidden in plain sight. See how the cube at the bottom is rough? In Freemasonry it's called the rough ashlar stone. Well watch this from Morals and Dogma. The rough ashlar is the people, rude and unorganized. Once again, you can see what this secret society secretly thinks of you. Now see how the stone built on top is smooth? That's called the perfect ashlar. The perfect ashlar is the state, the rulers. Yeah, the one eye sex cult of Freemasonry, which hides its master, Satanism. Now, where is this brain taking us? Remember, this guy is the general who fought against the United States forces to uphold the institution of slavery. And the grand pontiff of universal Freemasonry, who calls you the vulgar herd and the ignorant multitude, and admits that, yes, unbelievably so, Lucifer is the light bearer. This is the highest authority in Freemasonry, the secret religion of all our leaders and idols. Believe it. Now listen to this. The papacy and rival monarchies, all that will become the heritage of the temple, meaning the temple of Freemasonry. The world will soon come to us for its sovereigns and pontiffs. We shall constitute the equilibrium of the universe and be rulers over the masters of the world. They're going to own it all. And it's true. The papacy and the monarchy have fallen into their hands. All Freemasons now. This is a 150-year-old book, so you can see how far ahead they plan while we stay ignorant. How do you suppose that they won't achieve the New World Order? The New World Order of Death. Of combined and systematic movement and effort, the great revolution prepared for by the ages will begin to march. The future is all planned for by them. 
and the revolution prepared for by the ages is coming. And it'll look like a natural occurring event, just as current events seem natural. Lastly, from his other book, Legenda, and reading from the ancient and accepted Scottish writer Freemasonry, Albert writes, And thus the warfare against the powers of evil, meaning Christianity, that crushed the order of the temple in the 1300s, goes steadily on, and freedom marches ever onward toward the conquest of the world. The conquest of the world, guys. And this is their method. Ingenious as it is, the double-headed eagle, the left and right paradigm. Whether you are pro-abortion or life, prefer Maccas or KFC, Ford or Holden, vote Liberal or Labor, shop at Coles or Woolies, go for the Paramount Eels or the Canterbury Bulldogs, always the two most opposing forces, the result always feeds the one belly. The two heads always serve the same Masonic beast. Do you get it? That's number one. Number two is the horribly magnificent motto of their double-headed eagle, Ordo Abkal. That means order out of chaos. It's the ultimate way to achieve your sinister goals while looking like a hero. With one hand, they create beautiful and noble things. With the other hand, the hidden hand, they destroy and pervert. Then the helping hand comes back in to save or fix things again, alternating from one to the other while nudging toward a predetermined goal until finally reaching that goal that set in mind in the first place. All the while, you never knew that the same hand that's saving you is the same hand that was destroying you in the first place. Order out of chaos. Their order out of their chaos. Another way to look at it is this. Z creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. Y reacts by asking Z for protection and help to solve the problem. Z offers the solution that was planned for by them long before the crisis occurred. Ordo ab kao, order out of chaos. Now you can change Z and Y to suit any scenario. For example, your best friend who wants to sleep with you creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. You react by asking your best friend who wants to sleep with you for protection and help to solve the problem. Your best friend who wants to sleep with you offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. Each time your best friend gets closer and closer to you until eventually they're in your bed. How about your employee creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others? The employer reacts by asking the employee for help to solve the problem. The employee offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis occurred. The employee eventually gets the promotion. But this is the way I really want to put it. The government creates or exploits a problem, then attributes blame to others. The population reacts by asking the government for protection and help to solve the problem. The government offers the solution that was planned by them long before the crisis even occurred. This is how the great revolution prepared for by the ages by the Freemasons will begin. So who's going to warn you? Even modern Christianity is steered by Freemasonry. Hillsong won't warn the sheep about Freemasonry and the one world government. What, the Hillsong senior pastor who wrote these books and lives here? <laughs> no chance. Did modern day Christian heroes like Billy Graham warn you about Freemasonry? Well, no, because here he is giving the Master Mason grip to other Christian giants like Paul and Jan Crouch, all Freemasons. Here he gives the same third degree handshake to former President Harry Truman, and here to a Muslim Freemason. Billy is listed as a Freemason in the 33rd degree Albert Mackey's History of Freemasonry by the publisher on the inside flap. Billy's son, Franklin Graham, also won't ever expose Freemasonry because he's too busy eating at Voodoo Donuts where they sell these donuts and these pentagram donuts. More Christian heavyweights like John Hagee or Hagee throwing up the devil's horns. He'll never preach against Freemasonry. Neither will all these world famous pastors throwing up the devil's horns. The very popular Ray Comfort even stated that he wasn't a Freemason. Well, here he is, giving a perfect Masonic handshake with pastoral giant Joyce Meyer. Do either of them expose Freemasonry or the fact that it's the driving force behind the one world government, all predicted by Jesus? Of course not. What about Christian radio or the Christian music scene? 
No, not a single word of warning whatsoever regarding the satanic church that lives and breathes all around us. Freemasons like Bono, wearing the Christian name tag, his whole band of Freemasons. Bono too should know better than anyone that a one world government is a trap as foretold in the Bible. But Bono supports it. Oh yeah, he works for it. Just like the Masonic Pope does. Even if by some freak chance they didn't know any better. No disciple of Jesus can bend their knee to another man in the Masonic Lodge, calling him master and swear to keep secrets. Look what they call each other from the Encyclopedia Freemasonry. Master Mason, Grand Master, Most Eminent Grand Master, and the most appalling a title, title of all, Most Worshipful Master. Most Worshipful. Do you see how extra deluded the Christian Freemason has to be when Jesus said, Do not be called Master, because one is your Master. And what about all those oaths? Don't worry, Jesus covered that too. What I tell you is this. Do not put yourself under oath at all, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. How's that for an idea? But the Freemasons' yes means no, because they all swear to lie and conceal from the first degree initiation all the way through. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim it from the rooftops. That's Jesus. You see the contrast? How precise he was and still is. You think Bono and the Pope don't know about the Masonic calendar? And how it's not the same calendar as ours? From the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the real date of the world is found by adding 4,000 to the vulgar era. This whole Christian era is vulgar. So the year in the Masonic world is actually 6021. And this abbreviation is in French, the vulgar era, beginning since the year of the Lord, since the year of Jesus Christ. That's how they feel about the current age, which is coming to a mind-blowing end by design. Now, do you think Freemasons aren't capable of mass murder? Well, Joseph Stalin murdered approximately 20 million people, and he was a Freemason, displaying the sign of the master of the second veil of Freemasonry. Vladimir Lenin was the leader of the Bolshevik party, and he paved the way for the mass murder of 60 million people, mostly Christians, and he was a proud Freemason. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Adolf Hitler, a Freemason, clearly giving the grip of a Master Mason. And here he sits next to his military leader, Hermann Göring, who is also displaying his allegiance to Freemasonry with a hidden hand. He even displays the Masonic Triangle, just like fellow Masonic brother, Jay-Z. The mind of Hitler surrounds you now. It just hasn't pounced yet. The mind of Hitler isn't isolated to some portion of the world anymore. It now encompasses you. Hitler is everywhere. Far more clever than you can imagine. Evolved and sleeping in your bed. It's easy to say that's impossible. Once upon a time, 70 million Germans adored him. Once upon a time, Hitler was named Man of the Year by Time magazine. You've been fooled by the satanic machine. Please don't try to get inside to the mind of Freemasonry. It's like trying to understand Satan himself. You can't and you don't want to. Freemasons will make friends with their most hated enemies. They will cross-dress their morals to move closer to their goal. They'll make the English language void of any meaning by turning everything inside out and upside down to camouflage its objectives. They will simultaneously create charities along with the greatest machines to ever destroy the hearts of men, like pornography, they will sell their souls to gain the world. They are a dichotomy, a paradox, a lie that loves to speak the truth and a truth that loves to lie. They are a snake eating their own tail, consuming what they produce. Freemasonry is hell, dressed as heaven. Death, dressed as life. Its God is an angel of darkness dressed as an angel of light, and 90% of its membership is a shield lost in its symbolism. Freemasonry has become the ally and the opposition. Who are the biggest voices on so-called climate change in recent years, which is more order out of chaos? Al Gore, a Freemason, and Greta Thunberg. From a Jesus-hating, 
secret society family. Freemason and former Russian President Mikhail Gorbachev said this in 1996. Yes, the whole world is under the control of the evil one, like the Gospels say. Freemasonry controls the opposition, with the most popular conspiracy theorists Alex Jones and David Icke, both banned, yet both secretly Freemasons, who will lead you in every direction except into the arms of the ultimate power of the Gospels. Every noteworthy religion is comfortably caught in the Masonic net because they all stem from a lie. Here's the Dalai Lama with a bunch of Freemasons. He just loves hanging out with famous people. Here he's throwing up the devil's horns with Freemason Gene Simmons. But there's no way the Dalai Lama can be a Freemason, right? Well, here he is displaying the hidden hand of the Freemasons next to George W. Bush, a fellow brother. That's right, the Dalai Lama is a Freemason under an oath of silence and sworn to secrecy. Are you going to wake up now? Here he is with his students in his temple. And what's behind him? This symbol. Can you see? The pyramid with the emanating eye on top symbolized by a sun, which you know now is the phallus of the God of this world, shooting forth his generative light, his mystical sperm that gives life, and who's... One eye transcends good and evil, both of which are just e illusions of the mind. Understanding this comes by initiations, and yes, tantric initiations are used in Tibetan Buddhism. Gerald York was the Dalai Lama's emissary, his personal representative to the West, and he was personal friends with 33rd degree Freemason and Satanist Alistair Crowley, who wrote 20 essays named Alistair Crowley, The Golden Dawn, and Buddhism. And he also served as a consultant to the movie Lucifer Rising, the Dalai Lama's representative. See how the eye can also be represented by the sun, caught behind the moon in this movie poster. That's just like the Dalai Lama's logo. And here's a scene from the movie with the Masonic Square and Compass hidden in plain sight. Look at the symbol of Buddhism and look at the floor inside every Masonic Lodge symbolizing opposites and equilibrium which creates life and where evil is not what it seems it's necessary why do you think the new age author christopher hyatt who writes that the grand vicar of of lord lucifer is soon to be crowned prime minister of the world notes in that same book his appreciation of nietzsche the man who states that the christian is the sick animal man the zohar which is witchcraft and buddha these are the people he appreciates. Why does he lump Buddha into the same basket? I'll tell you why right now. Because in his highest manifestation, the Buddha, seeing the illusionary world through the all-seeing eye, his third eye, would not interrupt a rape if he happened to walk by, so as to stay detached from the karmic cycle. Whereas Jesus, knowing everything and more than the Buddha, would sacrifice himself because he was born to destroy evil, not transcend it. So tell me, who would you rather have walked by if you were being raped? A transcendental meditator or Jesus Christ? Whatever you think of me, you will have to reconcile the fact that all the leaders of the world from Scott Morrison to the Dalai Lama belong to the very same secret society as Adolf Hitler did, Freemasonry. The secret religion no one speaks about. For good reason, and by good, I mean very, very evil. What do you think is going on here? I've told you almost exactly what's going on. We're in a lot of trouble. Because in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And Hitler, Stalin, and Lenin combined will be child's play compared to what's just ahead. Now, here's a point-blank picture of the future and the reality of their most brutal truth from the 33rd degree Freemason, Alistair Crowley's The Book of the Law. We have nothing but the outcast and the unfit. Let them die in their misery. Compassion is the vice of kings. Stamp down the wretched and the weak. This is the law of the strong. Do you see? Can you see the future yet? Now please pay attention from his other book, Magic in Theory and Practice. This is what all the degrees of initiation are for. And this is what it takes for them to create the new order. He speaks of the initiation 
in the true order of the Rosy Cross. Rosy Cross being another name for the order of the Rosicrucians. Remember the guys that built this? Now this is a 33rd degree Freemason speaking. It is extremely desirable that he should have attained an absolute degree of moral emancipation. That is purity of spirit and perfect understanding. I've shown you this over and over. Because the world is full of evil, they mimic the morals of nature because they are the true morals of the true God of this world. That's purity to them. That's true honesty and perfect understanding. Evil is good. That's the moral emancipation he's speaking of. Now watch this and brace yourself because this is the future. There is a magical operation of maximum importance, the initiation of a new eon. When it becomes necessary to utter a word, the whole planet must be bathed in blood. This bloody sacrifice is the critical point of the world ceremony of the proclamation of Horus, the crowned and conquering child as Lord of the Eon. I've shown you that secret societies participate in the science of blood rituals. Well, this is what it climaxes into, a massive blood ritual in the name of the new Eon, the new age, which revolves around a divine plan, not of this world, as confessed by all of them. You are not who you think you are. You are not where you think you are. Do you see it? Can you fathom? And what blood means in this world? So much more than what you may have known before now. Blood sacrifice is of the utmost importance. It's what the beings in the other realm require, desire. We can't fully understand it. But do you see how the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ takes on a whole new meaning now? A very real meaning. And guess what? Because of it, the good guy really does win in the end. You either fall under the blood of the world or under the blood of him. There is no middle ground. Blood is like the monetary currency of the spirits. And that's how God bought us back from the legal ownership of the ruler of this world with blood, his own blood. Now you can begin to understand why they hate him so much. Because that's why he was born into the world, into the world of flesh to produce blood of his very own. Not by means of perishable things were you set free once and for all, by the payment of ransom money, but by costly blood, by the one who was visibly manifested at the closing years of the times, for your sake. That is the truth. Do you think it's just a coincidence that this is the last age before the long planned for new order of the ages? That's ages, plural. That means forever. That's the plan. That's why the Gospels say that he was visibly manifested at the closing years of the times, at the end of this last age. In the book 1984, George Orwell told us, if you want a vision of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. I've shown you that this so-called new age is in actuality a new satanic age. And it's not really new at all. It's very old indeed, it's ancient. But like I said, its progress was derailed by the appearance of Jesus on the human scene. Now I'll prove to you that the, the New Age is an old religion. Novus Ordo Seclorum is part of a quotation taken from the Roman pagan philosopher Virgil's fourth eclogue, which was borrowed by him from the Sibylline records, which were ancient prophecies delivered by an oracle through witchcraft. Or divination. That's where the phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum comes from. Now look at what the full phrase actually says. A mighty order of ages is born anew. Both the prophetic virgin and Saturnian kingdoms now return. Now a new progeny is led down from the lofty heavens. Favor chased Lucina, the boy soon to be born in whom the iron age shall come to an end and the golden one shall arise in the whole earth. We've just been told that the New Age is a Saturnian kingdom, which returns. So it's been here before. Next, we see that a new progeny, meaning a new seed, a new race. There's that race again, is coming to Earth. And that a boy will be born, who will bring the Iron Age, which is the age we're currently in, to an end. And that the Golden Age, the New Age about to begin, will again arise over the whole world. 
Now, what is the Saturnian Kingdom? Well, for starters, this is a band called Saturnian Mist. And here on their front cover, we have a reference to magic. Then we see by the singer's shirt, they're Satanists. Then with his other shirt, we see the connection once again between the inverted pentagram of Satanism and the one eye of Freemasonry, the secret religion of the who's who of planet Earth. Freemason and Satanist Marilyn Manson has a song called Satanalia, and on a satanic website on ritual offerings for demonic bindings, we find that Satan is Saturnian in nature. Here on the front page, we see the inverted pentagram under the head of the Baphomet, and right next to it, a version of the square and compass of the Freemasons, of which a lodge is located near a suburb near you, no matter where on earth you live. The Satanic Church hidden in plain sight. Now let's go straight to the source so you can see for yourself the nature of the New Age Saturnian Kingdom found in the full quote of the Freemasons' New World Order Seal. From this book, which is a factual study of the single most influential occult organization in modern Germany, the Fraternitas Saturni, or the Brotherhood of Saturn. We learn of the path of the Saturnian initiate, which is outlined in detail with the meaning of all 33 grades, 33 degrees of Freemasonry. This is the very same thing, the same objectives. All secret societies work for the same goal because they all have the same spirit. The only difference between Freemasonry and this Saturnian fraternity is that your local Masonic lodges are a veiled and camouflaged filtering systems for future Satanists, from which all influential figures of society are chosen, where the real religion begins at the 33rd degree. Whereas with orders like the Saturnian Brotherhood, there is no filtering system. As such, you're a student of Satanism from the first degree. That's why Satanism's takeover would have been impossible without international Freemasonry. The Saturnian teachings include sexual mysticism, sex magic, and Nietzschean Thelemism. Nietzsche, remember the guy who says that Christians and the mindset to help the weak, weak makes up the sick animal man. The guy who wrote this book and doesn't believe in good and evil. And Thelemism from 33rd degree Freemason who says that in this book that to initiate the new age the whole world must be bathed in blood in a bloody sacrifice before man can accept the law of Thelema. Nietzschean Thelemism. That's what the New Age Saturnian Kingdom, from which the Freemasons took this phrase from, actually looks like. This factual study on the Saturnian Brotherhood is filled with references to Lucifer, Satan, magic, sex magic, blood, sacrifice, the number 666, as mentioned by Jesus Christ himself, and of course, Freemasonry. The secret society that all of our politicians and entertainers belong to. And what's the demonic sigil for Saturn? The Masonic Square and Compass. Are you going to snap out of it now? When you see a beautiful sunrise and smell the fresh air or hear a great song or see a great movie, are you going to forget where you really are? When you hear people using Jesus Christ's holy name as a cuss word, are you going to forget where this phenomenon really came from? and why it's taking place? Now that you've seen how actual and bona fide the reality of 666 is from their own mouths and symbols, let me show you where else it's revealed. Do you see these Roman numeral numbers down here? They add up to 1776, the year that America officially became the country we know of today. And also the year of the birth of another secret society, which was absorbed into Freemasonry after it was banned in 1785. But look, the base numbers. M is a thousand, C is a hundred, and X is ten. All you have to do is subtract the base numbers. 1776 minus a thousand, minus a hundred, minus ten or simply remove the Roman numerals which represent the base numbers. No, I'm not playing tricks on you. Neither are your eyes. But someone else is. Now that you've seen the prevalence and seriousness of this horrid number, now that you've seen what you've seen, I can show you where else it appears. This figure. 
is represented by the numbers. To make this work, they had to remove the number 1 altogether and separate the 2. Of course, we'd be too dumb to pick up on it. But 789 minus 456 is this. Multiplied by this lonesome 2. That's right. This dark and mysterious figure is none other than the long-anticipated Antichrist, the ruler of the Saturnian Kingdom, which is on its way. And Australia has been steeped up to its neck in secret societies since the early 1900s. World Economic Forum logo, with this slash through the O's, is of course representative of the number of the ruler of the New Age. 666. The barcode is the primitive version of the worldwide system that Jesus predicted would revolve around the number of the beast. And as you can see, the base of every single barcode in all the world is 666. No matter if the lines are on the ends and in the middle are elongated or not. I found that out from the horse's mouth in an interview with the man who was commissioned by IBM to come up with a new way to automate data collection. There are in fact three sixes in the Google logo, which comes from this occult symbol. Coincidence. And he found in a Masonic lodge, the square and compass symbol appears in the middle of a hexagram, which is a symbol used in the Royal Art of Freemasonry, witchcraft, as shown in this book. Well, among other things, the hexagram itself can be broken down to quite clearly represent 666. This is a Masonic square and compass designed by the Manal Masonic Lodge, symbolizing world unity. At the top you find the logo of the United Nations. Well, there are 33 segments in the UN logo, symbolizing the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. See this crop circle here with the Masonic eye on top of the pyramid? I know nothing about crop circles and the phenomenon of them, but I know how many rays are coming off the eye. 33. 33 degrees of Freemasonry. Don't forget that the highest authority of Freemasonry already admitted to be the designers of the pyramidal seal in a 1962 edition of their magazine, The New Age. I've shown you how the inverted pentagram makes for the spelling of the word Mason in the same seal. Well, that same pentagram with the elongated top horns appears here in a European Union logo. An inverted satanic pentagram right in front of our eyes. Here's the European European Union building architecturally mimicking the Tower of the Bell. That was the very same tower that the God of the Bible destroyed thousands of years ago, according to the Bible, when Nimrod, one of the admitted founders of the original craft of Freemasonry, tried to unite the world under one world government. So this logo and this building design is a clear statement to the God who intervened the first attempt at a world government. This is England's Secret Service logo for MI5 with the word intelligence being symbolized by the Eye of Lucifer who was viewed as the most intelligent entity in existence by the secret societies. And this is the symbol for the Information Awareness Office. You know exactly who's in control and now you know exactly what they want and they will get it. In a 1962 article written by former US President and Freemason's wife Edith Roosevelt in the New Hampshire News and speaking of the spiritual counterpart building for the United Nations called the Temple of Understanding. She writes that the symbolism planned for the building dates back to the black magic practiced by the high priests of ancient Egypt and that the building will contain a giant eye. You don't have to wonder why now because you know why. This clothing designer is fully aware that the one eye symbol is synonymous with Satan and a hatred of Jesus. Does this movie poster make any more sense to you now? Well, are you ready for the second biggest shock of all? Whatever you think of what you're about to see, please come see me on the other side of this so I can show you something. This clip only goes for a few minutes. And keep in mind, the only reason I'm showing you this to you is because the writer and director of the preview of this movie style documentary was murdered 
along with his wife and his little daughter and his dog all before the produ production could begin. The murder was made to look like a murder-suicide. The news of which never made national broadcasts just the local news. Case closed, nothing to see here. You have to ask yourself why. After so many movies with a dystopian, world war, totalitarian type theme, why was this movie so dangerous and strictly unacceptable for public viewing that a whole family would be murdered? Well, this movie was going to tell us about America's secret destiny. And one other thing which you'll see on the other side of this clip, an amazing thing. As titled by Manly P. Hall over a hundred years ago, What's the secret destiny of America? Well, it's this. What was David's hidden message inside the gray state? And could it be the reason for his death? Perhaps the scariest part of gray state's conceptual trailer is this character here, who appears to be operating a guillotine. David Crowley was very intentional in this frame of the movie. He added something that I believe he wanted the people to know about. Who is the identity of this executioner? If you look closely, you will see that this terrifying character is wearing something around his waist. It appears to look like an apron. The executioner wears a Freemason apron, complete with the all-seeing eye, the compass, and the two pillars. I do believe David Crowley is trying to tell us something. He is telling us that the organization behind the French and American revolutions, the organization behind the Italian revolution of 1830, the organization that outlined a plan to overtake the Vatican in a document called the Alta Vendita, the organization behind the Trail of Tears and the deaths of thousands of Native Americans 
under Freemason Grandmaster Andrew Jackson. The organization behind the Ku Klux Klan in the United States post-Civil War and its rebirth in 1915. The organization behind Hiroshima and Nagasaki during 33rd degree Freemason Harry Truman's presidency. These are men with a radical revolutionary agenda throughout the entire world because they worship and follow a radical revolutionary deity. The first to have led a revolt against the Most High Lord. When I was in high school, coming from a completely non-Christian and non-religious family or background, I distinctly remember the first time that I decided that the Bible or the New Testament, to be more precise, precise was definitely not true. Made up, fairy tale, whatever. It was one verse, one scripture that to me at the time proved unequivocally that it wasn't written for our time. A prophecy that was impossible to be fulfilled. Here's the verse. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and authority to administer justice was given them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, because of the testimony they bore of Jesus, and because of the word of God. No way could guillotines be introduced as a form of execution in the 21st century, right? No way. Proof that the Bible was a prehistoric book written for prehistoric people. And this is long before... He woke me up on a midnight highway to spare my life from a high-speed collision into a concrete wall. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2021, like the smartphone or the smartwatch, this is called the smart guillotine. Built by Chanel. You know, the perfume and clothing and accessories brand for the rich. What on earth does a perfume company have to do with chopping people's heads off? Well, I thought I told you that all of this is just the tip of the iceberg. I wonder who really owns Chanel. Well, here's their logo, and there is an eye in the design. And have you seen their drip design? How odd. Welcome to the real world. You ready? This is from a legislation archive from the Georgia House of Representatives in the 1995-96 sessions. This is Bill HB 1274 on the death penalty, guillotine provisions. How far along are we into enacting these bills worldwide? I don't know. Maybe they've been enacted already. But I just wanted to show you that in 1995 the ball was already rolling. Another ball that's rolling are the seven universal Noahide laws. They sound great from the outside, designed so to conceal some terrifying details on the inside. Firstly, they were signed into US law in 1991 by George H.W. Bush by Mar on March 26. Here's the bill and resolution. It was named Education Day. As you can see in the details of resolution HJ 104, they are the seven Noahide laws, resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in 1996. Every single president since H.W. Bush has annually re-signed this resolution. Many world leaders have called for the acknowledgement and observance of the seven Noahide laws, including the President of the European Union in July 2014 and the Australian Governor-General Michael Jeffrey in 2008. And this will be international law. So what's the problem? Well, just for starters, the law against idol worship will include, quite specifically, the worship of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, which the Noahide laws will classify as blasphemy, and the punishment for transgressing the seven Noahide laws and for blaspheming the ineffable name of God by calling Jesus God is decapitation. I'll let you take that in for a second. This will be governed by a world court with no possibility of appeals. Something like this, an international Sanhedrin. Who do you think is truly behind these laws? Well, I can show you that right now. Here is the bill being signed into law by H.W. Bush, and here is their signature hidden in plain sight, the hidden hand of Freemasonry. 
displayed by this sinister and gloating looking individual. And you know what Freemasonry is a cover for now. Who do you think designed the guillotine in the first place? This guy, Joseph Guillotine, a Freemason. Still don't believe in the prophecies of Jesus Christ? You still in denial? Well, that's why the director was murdered, and his wife, daughter, and dog. I think of them often, and sometimes when I need spiritual sobering up, I think of that fateful and evil night where that beautiful Christian family were brutally eliminated. If you think he wasn't onto something, well, he paid the greatest price to share this with you. Prophecy will be fulfilled. Listen to the words that come right after the execution by guillotine scripture in the Gospels. And I saw those who were such that they did not worship the beast, nor his image, and did not receive his mark of identification upon their forehead and hand. Remember this mark in the video? I'm not saying that the director knew what the mark would be, but based on the symbology, he knew who would be behind it. Look at the triangular symbol of the Freemasons. The Masonic Triangle around the eye and the Brotherhood of Saturn. Now look at the front cover of the book written by New Age author Maurice Nichol. The mark. Same symbol. Identical to the symbol used by J.K. Rowling who said its design was inspired by the Freemasons. Who has this tattoo which represents the Baphomet. Well, Solve Coagula is the process in which they will bring this new world system to life. It's identical to the Masonic motto of order out of chaos. Solve means dissolve or destroy. And coagula means to bring the elements back together into a new and higher form. A new and higher system. Jesus described it as the beast system, and one way or another, we will be marked as a form of identification in order to participate. But first, chaos must ensue. A deep Masonic truth, which is mostly true anyway, is that destruction precedes construction. It's like having to destroy a tree in order to create a table. The same principle applies to creating the new age. That's why I know that the process which involves the creation of a new system must involve the destruction of this one. Now, this is the last referenced work I'm going to use to show you who will be the, the head of that system, that one world government. A book by David Spangler, considered as one of the founding fathers of the modern new age. He also has an intimate relationship with the United Nations as shown in 1975 document which was uploaded to the UN archives in 2006. Uh, please pause to confirm that. Where you can find his name listed under the Board of Directors for the Planetary Citizens Group. In his book, Reflections on the Christ, David Spangler, remember one of the founding fathers of the New Age and a member of the Board of Directors in a United Nations sanctioned program, repeatedly upholds and honors the entity known as Lucifer. He tells us all about what is required to step into the new age. Well, mainly what's required is a new understanding of the angel Lucifer. He writes that when this great project of evolution began, man went forth as consciousness to learn his divinity and Lucifer went with him. It is important to see that Lucifer described as an angel, a being, a great and mighty planetary consciousness. He says that, just like in Halloween and Trick or Treat, if the person offers a treat to Lucifer who knocks on his door, and the person says to Lucifer, come in, and I will give to you the treat of my love and understanding, and I will uplift you in the light and presence of the Christ. Christ meaning my outflow. 
then Lucifer becomes that being who carries the ultimate treat, the light of wisdom. Lucifer represents experience. Lucifer is literally the angel of experience. The Luciferic element becomes the true revealer of light, the angel of light. The light that reveals to us the path to the Christ comes from Lucifer. The Christ that he refers to obviously is the Antichrist spirit, who will eventually manifest on earth as one man. But for some odd reason on page 60 he feels compelled to clarify that he was only joking once when he said, maybe to enter the new age we all need to take a Luciferic initiation. Well, that's definitely no joke. That's right. Lucifer is the saviour of the secret societies. The solar system was the manifestation of the consciousness of a very great being known as the solar logos. And if we go back to the secret society of the Brotherhood of Saturn, we read that mankind will be able to take a measure of egocentric power from the solar logos. In this way, Lucifer is the saviour of humankind. Do you see who you're dealing with? These are the people above you, the rich, powerful, influential, overflowing in all areas of those who are steering society, and they're about to reach their destination. Who showed you? Who told you? Who warned you? Jesus Christ did. Ah, oh, those pesky Christians. In the animation flushed away, the villain Toad conspires to genocide all the rats in the soul world and replace them with a superior species, a new species. No one is aware except for this one rat who is briefly seen in the beginning. He's a Christian rat, a nut job, carrying around a plaque, as some real-life Christians used to, warning everyone of the impending doom that is upon them. What's the twist that's hidden in plain sight for no one to see? Well, the villain Toad, planning the new age, wears the ring of a Freemason. This ring. And he wears it exactly on the finger that a Master Mason should. It is worn on the third finger of the right hand. There is one who predicted it all. And they know that. That's why he's been so thoroughly discredited. Or so it seems. Yes, the nutjob Christian was right all along. Remember one last thing before I close. From Masonic New Age author Christopher Heyer, who spoke of the well-planned for and long-awaited invocation of the Prime Minister of the World, when he wrote in his book, A Massive Truth That I Wish With All My Being That You Would Grasp. Both satanic cults and Christian fundamentalists are closer to seeing the truth than most normal people. The world has always been at war, a spiritual war from the beginning. And if you don't know it, then you're losing the battle. The Gospel tell us so accurately that the enemy we wrestle against is not made of flesh and blood, but it is made of spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. That's where the real war is being waged, in the spirit. And now that we know what secret societies are and what they've tapped into, we can rest assured that that statement from the Gospels is true. That's why the common denominator between all of the secret societies is the anti-Christian sentiment. You need to ask yourself why. Why the negative obsession with Christianity? It's not as if Christians run the game. Freemasons have banned Bibles from schools. They teach evolution as a fact. Pornography is thriving. There are no Christian protesters left. Homosexuality is rampant and protected. And Christianity is buckled. Which church preaches against Freemasonry? Which church is telling you about Satan and his hidden church, which has permeated every vein of society? So why do they hate Jesus if they're at the top of their game? Because Jesus Christ is real. That's why. And he left us, left us prophecy that they can't escape. See, the more they win, the more they fall into the hands of the prophecies of Jesus and his gospels. What a blessing for you, those who would grasp this as truth. What good news for you, and what a terrifying conundrum for them. If you've come this far, and you still don't care, or still unwilling to trust, then you deserve what's coming, as a law of nature. Because you've been warned of all of it. The one world government clearly on its way, cashless society, inevitable. The mark that each person will receive, 
without which you won't be able to buy or sell or participate in this world. And the manifestation of the name, the number of the name of the one who will implement this system. 666. All of it, all of it is coming to pass. Inescapable we are from him. Everything and everyone will fall back into his hands where he will finally separate the goats from the sheep. Now watch the Bible destroy Freemasonry like no other book in two minutes. Regarding their lodges and obelisks, their heart is faithless. Now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their sacred obelisks. And speaking of the bloodline that gave birth to Jesus, God says, You shall not set up for yourselves a sacred pillar, which the Lord God hates. See what you're up against, Freemasonry? While Freemasonry meets and speaks in darkness and secret, Jesus said, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear, and in secret I have said nothing. Freemasons are known as builders. Well, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be dashed to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. Every Masonic Lodge is built so that all the members face the east. Who are these men with their backs toward the temple, facing the east and worshipping the sun? It is dis detestable. Freemasonry does evil in secret with their hidden hand, but they blow a trumpet over the hand that does good. But Jesus says, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing. Your good deed must be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You can't become a Mason if you're broke, blind, maimed, or have a criminal record. Jesus said, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Freemasonry takes pride in its secret rituals and is hungry to rule the world. The Gospels say that their destiny is destruction. They make appetite their God. They take pride in what should bring shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. Freemasonry believes that the light is but darkness visible. The Bible says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light. And Jesus further said, If therefore the light which is in you be darkness, how great a darkness that would be. Freemasons spend their whole lives taking gruesome oaths of secrecy. Jesus said, But above all things, above all things, my brethren, Stop this, the practice of putting yourselves under oath. Freemasonry is built upon a hierarchical system, a pyramidal system. Jesus said, for everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled, and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. We could go on and on, but we're going to end on this one. Exclusively written for the practices in the lodge room of political Freemasonry. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth who winks with his eye, signals with his feet, and teaches with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart. He always stirs up conflict. Therefore, the disaster will overtake him. He will suddenly be destroyed. That is Freemasonry through and through. And apart from the man in the mirror, prior to your baptism of the Holy Spirit, Freemasonry is the villain. They do go about with a corrupt mouth as they are sworn to secrecy. They do proverbially wink with the eye, making the one eye. They most certainly signal with their feet and teach with their hands and fingers in the lodge, I can vouch. And they do plot evil, stir up conflict in order to further their goal of the new age and the new world order, the greatest conflict being up ahead. But thank God Almighty above. The verse also tells us that disaster will overtake them. And they will be destroyed. One frightful and glorious day. You can count on that. Because the only thing you can count on in this world, more than death, more than taxes, is the Son of God. This is it. This is the last shock. And by far the biggest if you ever needed intellectual proof that Jesus Christ is real and living right now, this is it. If Jesus and the Gospels weren't true, 
then Luciferians wouldn't be running the world. Atheists would, or some other version of modern man. Anyone, but not Satanists. Not the passionate enemies of Jesus. If Jesus wasn't real, then so-called Satanists would be scattered here and there, over the world, in little local covens, by silly teenagers rebelling against society and living in their own la-la land with their own little make-believe devils, being make-believe rebels. But no, people who believe that Lucifer is God run the world from top to bottom. They are dedicated to the core. They're highly sophisticated. They make the movies. They star in the movies. They write the songs. They sing and dance. They are worshipped as idols. They set trends. They live large. And they practice witchcraft. Complete with sex magic and blood sacrifices. Why? Why do they do that? Why would they bother? Because witchcraft is real and has been since before civilization began, hidden from the vile multitude who have been stupefied by propaganda to the point that they don't believe in anything anymore. And who waged a war on witchcraft on your behalf? God did, the God of the Bible. If Jesus wasn't real, Luciferians wouldn't be building their paradise on earth. Atheists would. If Jesus wasn't real, Luciferians wouldn't be passionately hating him to the point of keeping their existence hidden under penalties of torture and death. Lo and behold, in the 21st century, yes, if Jesus was a myth, Luciferians wouldn't be working overtime to inadvertently fulfill every prophecy that Jesus gave us. Can anybody read me? What part of Jesus foretold a worldwide cashless system, a worldwide government, and a worldwide religion do you not get? If Jesus wasn't real, why do former Satanists freely admit that, the, that only the true Christians are immune to witchcraft? They have no power over the disciples of Jesus. How is that possible? There was the first shock, which was the fact that an international secret society exists at all, and that all people in power, prominence, celebrities, they're members of it. That was the first shock. The second shock was the oaths they take and the rituals they perform. Decapitated heads, brains exposed to the sun, drinking wine from human beings, skulls, all done by the people you respect the most. Pretty shocking if you have any brains left in your skull and heart left in your ribcage. The third shock was the reason they took the oaths and performed the rituals. And that reason is that the secret society they all belong to is in fact Satanism. The fourth shock was the details of witchcraft and the details of the new Satanic age, the Saturnian kingdom, where billions are planned for death to pave the way for a spiritual and technological utopia. But do you know what the biggest shock of all is? The shock that surpasses all of them combined. It's Jesus. The greatest news you could never think up, that God left his abode to come here, a form of hell, manifest on earth, to be ridiculed and executed by taking a bullet for us. Don't worry, his second coming won't be so sacrificial. Better start fearing like you fear a cop and like you fear a judge. Oh, I know you tremble in front of them, but you don't fear God. Oh, how we love the darkness and sin. You, possibly you, loved gossip, you loved sex and porn, you loved sodomy, you couldn't stop lying, you couldn't stop cussing, you loved your idols, singers, actors, sports people, sports teams, you just couldn't cut yourself off from the ways of the world. Who wants to be pure? I have to be pure? I have to live holy? Stop sinning? That's so boring. What kind of God is this? To hell with that God. Well... Do you like filth in your home? Do you? Do you like filth on your carpet, on your clothes, on your face? Do you invite filthy guests over and give them a share in all your belongings and all your power? Do you give them the keys to your house and car? No, you don't. But the Creator, who has the greatest house of all, he should. We can barely earn a thousand bucks a week. And we don't give that away to anyone. But now God should share his wealth with you, the unclean, the unrepentant. 
Is it too much to ask your filthy guests to clean up before they enter? To watch their mouths? To control their willy? Is that too much to ask? Oh, but if God was real, what about all the children that die? What about them? What are you doing about them? Are you still stuck on which phone you're going to upgrade to or what's for dinner? Why don't you leave your abode, your luxuries and your loved ones and risk it all to go save some children yourself? Oh, but what about all those who've never heard of Jesus? Let me ask you, what's your excuse? I know they have one, but what's yours? You've heard of him. Every morning you wake up and look at the calendar is a testament to his name because it's 2021 in Australia. It's 2021 in Brazil. It's 2021 in China. It's 2021 in every single, every single country in the world. So let me ask you, 2021 years since what? Like I said, just waking up in the morning and knowing what day it is, is a testament to him. But if God was real, why wouldn't he just show himself? Show himself to who? To you? You can't even get on your knees and repent. You can't even hate sin and scream out to him. So why would he? How do I get the girl if I don't ask her out? And if I do, maybe she rejects me the first time and the second. How bad do I want her? How hard will I try? Most haven't even knocked on his door. Well, I did. I just kept knocking and knocking. And then I started banging and banging. I refused to leave his porch. I lay there like a hungry puppy. But even when he answered the door, I did the runner. Because he was too big for me. And I loved sin a little too much. Yet he still left the light on for me. But here's the craziest part about people who ask me why he doesn't just show himself the way they'd like him to. Their hearts have been so hardened that even if he did appear to them, in two weeks they would go back to being their old self and he knows that. That's why. They might even forget it ever happened. Oh, that was just a crazy day. That was probably all in my head. Oh, how we love to make excuses. But if God was real, what about all the other gods? What other gods? Did Buddha perform a miracle for you? Did he affect a plethora of witnesses? Were his followers stoned to death, sawn in half, eaten alive? Did historians of his era leave any trace of him? Did he prophesy all the kingdoms that would appear on earth? And in what order? Did he foretell of worldwide floods of enemies that would despise his followers, use his name as a castle, and eventually attempt to set up a world kingdom? Did his appearance change the calendar from one end of the world to the other and predict that his appearance would in fact change the calendar? What did the prophet Muhammad do for you? Apart from stealing Jesus from billions of people and corrupting the Gospels, did he dedicate his entire life to sinlessness? Did he remain celibate so that his blood could make a difference in the hidden realm by the science of sacrifice, which is practiced in secret every day, in order to shield your very soul? No, he didn't. Instead, he had 11 wives. One of them was nine years old, and he lived like a king, while the real king lived like a slave and died like one too and washed the feet of his disciples while demons trembled at his name and presence and still do. And let's not even bother with the other pagan gods, Osiris, Odin, Vishnu, all inventions of fertility cults that worship the sun, sex, genitals, death, destruction, agricultural religions. Did anyone else apart from Jesus Christ ever say the words, I am the truth? Have those words even ever come out of someone's mouth? I've heard of, I know the truth, I have the truth, but I am the truth? That doesn't even make sense. Unless truth itself was once upon a time born on earth as a man. Well, of course he's the truth. Where are all the heart-wrenching, knee-buckling testimonies about the indescribable power of this Holy Spirit which comes in to sweep you off your feet and drown you in its tides, changing you forever? Where are all those testimonies? I'll tell you where they are. In the Christian column. That's where. Oh yeah, you, you'll get them here and there in every genre, but Christian testimony simply outclips the rest. Where are all the life-changing, electrifying Hindu testimonies, the Muslim testimonies, 
a Muslim, Buddhist, or a Jew on the street corner, or from the proverbial rooftops, shouting the truth for all to hear, no matter the cost, because they love us that much, because he loves us that much, where, where are they? And Freemason testimonies? Have you even heard of one of those? Satanic testimonies? You ever heard of one of those? A Freemason on his knees, sobbing from joy because of the overwhelming knowledge that Lucifer loves him? No Mason or Satanist has ever done or heard of such a thing. But the biggest cult in size is the cult of society. Where do you think the word culture comes from? And the TV, the doctors, the idols, the PhDs, the scientists, they are the priests of the cult of society. You atheists think you don't live in a religious world of your own, filled with daily rituals and daily worship? Even your beliefs require faith in what your priests teach you. Evolution, no proof. Age of the earth, no proof. Distance of the sun, all faith-based on what you are told by strangers. You can see the rings of Saturn with your telescopes, but you can't see the buggy on the moon that was left behind in 1969, yet you still believe because you have faith. Don't you worry, no matter who you are, you live in a religious world because life is religion. And if you're still in the I'm not religious category, think again. You all worship something or someone and your religion is futile. But for you, for the one, whoever you are, remember the advantage that evil has over good. A little good doesn't destroy evil, but a little bit of evil destroys all good. See this glass of water? One single drop of poison is enough to render the whole lot useless or deadly. That means that 99% of the goodness and purity of that water amounts to nothing, all because of one single drop. The whole glass is evil. And so it is with the human soul. You better believe it. Does anyone go out with a stain on their face or on their shirt? You think the soul can't be stained? Think about it. Just one lie makes you a liar. So you can't go where life is stained with death. Now, in case someone thinks I'm playing the high and mighty role, I tell you this. I used to be a liar. I used to be a pervert. I used to be a drunkard. I used to smoke all kinds of poison. I used to have angry outbursts, use a filthy mouth, indulge in filthy humor. I used to. Past tense. But no more. He finally summoned me. He called my name for the last time. He took my dog, then my music. He took my band, broke it all and broke me, flooded me clean. He sent for me. He woke me up from a deep sleep on a high speed midnight highway with a whisper, an actual whisper in my ear and only meters between me and a concrete wall with my name on it because he knew I had it in me. I had it in me to lay it all down, risk everything so I can take a stand for him, for the Gospels and for you. Well, this is me taking a stand. Brothers and sisters, I did all this for just one person and I'll be hated and mocked and worse maybe so that that one, whoever you may be, will wage war on sin and believe. Don't let even one drop in. No matter what the distractions this evil world may place in your path in order to bury itself and its poison in your heart where it will take root and overpower the 99% goodness in you. Just like only a few find success in this world, even fewer will find the kingdom. It's far more difficult than winning X Factor or making a billion dollars, or reaching the 33rd degree of a secret society, it's as difficult as loving your greatest enemy. And that's just about impossible. But if you can figure out how to do that, then you've found the road to life.